again, everybody. This is Van Patrick along with Bob Reynolds and our entire mutual broadcast crew from Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C. It's the National Football Conference playoff game between the Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers. Today's game is being broadcast coast to coast all over America by Mutual Sports on some of America's great radio stations and is being sent by satellite to Europe and then shortwave all over the world. We had one of the most exciting ball games in National Football League history yesterday, that finish at Pittsburgh, and then another great finish at San Francisco. And today we've got another big doubleheader for you, the Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers, and then we'll switch down to Miami to the Orange Bowl Stadium where Al Wester and Bob Halloran are all set to bring you the Miami Dolphins and the Cleveland Browns. But right now, let's call in again Bob Reynolds. Thank you very much, Van. Well, the introduction of the two teams now, the Green Bay Packers coming out. We'll get back to the field in just a moment. You know, this is rather a strange situation for Dan Devine to be in. The Packers, according to the preseason poll, weren't supposed to be back this year. But uh, as bumper stickers all over northern Wisconsin are pointing out, the Pack is back. They are, and with a vengeance. They had a 21-16 defeat pinned on them November 26th by Washington, and that is still fresh in their minds. They'll try to gain the NFC Finals. The Skins haven't won a playoff game since 1942, and George Allen has never come out a winner as a head coach in postseason action of any kind. Of course, uh, he was an assistant coach at Chicago. He ran the defensive unit when the great defensive team the Bears had that year in 1963 went all the way and beat the New York Giants and Y.E. Tittle in the NFC Championship. Actually, the NFL Championship. At that time, the AFL and the NFL were still separate entities. Well, we're just about ready for kickoff time. Let's get back to Bob Reynolds and Van Patrick. Back in Kennedy Stadium here in Washington, the introduction of the players now to this sellout crowd. The Washington Redskins being introduced to the defensive unit. And you can tell from the roar of approval that this is a highly partisan crowd as expected. Although there are many here from Green Bay. Practically, I think, the whole town of Green Bay. Anyway, the Packers did win the toss. They will receive. And here is the offensive line. At the split end, Leland Glass, number 46, the rookie from Oregon. At left tackle from Southern California, Bill Hayhoe, number 77. At left guard, a five-year veteran from Arizona, Bill Luke, number 62. The center, the veteran from Wisconsin, nine years in the league, Kenny Bowman, number 57. At right guard from Stanford, number 67, Malcolm Snyder. And at right tackle, Dick Himes, number 72. And the tight end, Len Garrett, number 88, from New Mexico Highlands. In the backfield, Scott Hunter, number 16, a two-year man from Alabama, starting at quarterback. John Brockington, one of the running backs, 42 is number, two years from Ohio State. And the other one, MacArthur Lane, from Utah State, number 36, a five-year veteran, obtained by Green Bay in that trade. And uh, the other flanker, Carol Dale, the other wide receiver, number 84, from Virginia Tech. Defensively, Ron McDowell, number 79, from Nebraska, will start at left end for Washington. Bill Brundage, number 77, from Colorado at left tackle. Tyron Talbert, number 72, will be in at right tackle. And the right end, Verlin Biggs from Jackson State, number 89. The linebackers, the veteran Chris Hamburger, all pro, North Carolina, 55 is his number. Myron Patios, the middle backer, number 66, from Notre Dame. And on the right side, Jack Party, number 32, from Texas A&M. In the secondary, Pat Fisher, number 37, at the left corner. Roosevelt Taylor, number 22, at the left safety. Rig Owens, number 23, from Cincinnati at the right safety. And Mike Bass, number 41, from Michigan at the right corner. And in just a couple of minutes now, the National Football League kickoff on Mutual. All set to go here, back in the broadcast booth from Kennedy Stadium. Mutual, ready to bring you the action from coast to coast. This is the Washington Redskins. Tee it up against the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay winning the toss, back in the deep spot. Thomas and Hudson, and ready to boot it off, and Kurt Knight, and ready to bring you all the action, Van Patrick. And Bob Reynolds, and here's the whistle and the boot. High end over end kick. Coming down to about the four-yard line. It's taken there. Back to the 10, to the 15, to the 20. The 25, going with that football there, number 27, the Green Bay Packers. And that was Alvin Heyman bringing it back. And so we'll see where they're going to mark it. 
Thomas, and Alvin Heyman is the man who made the tackle right on the 20-yard line. Mike Thomas brought it back on the run back. He got it on about the four and brought it back to the 20-yard line. So first down and 10 to go now. The Washington Redskins on the defense, the Green Bay Packers offensively. Hunter's the quarterback. He's got a wide receiver set out to the right and in the slot. He has Carol Dale. Got Hunter, who's programmed by Bart Starr, and the give it to Brockington, drives right tackle that Washington defense in on top of him. Ron McDowell coming in from the left end, along with Bill Brundage and Jack Pardee. And they hammer him to the turf. Right on the 20, he possibly got a half a yard on the play, and that's about all. This Washington defense is really tough, so let's keep it right on the 20. Make it second down and 10 to go now for the Green Bay Packers. Got Hunter, the quarterback. And Hunter has completed 43.7% of his passes. Five-man defensive line up there for Washington. McDowell, Sistrunk, Brundage, Calvert, and Biggs. So there's a switch defensively, Bob. Two wide receivers on the right side in the I formation. Hunter on a give now to MacArthur Lane, and Lane up the middle gets to about the 23-yard line, but he's brought down. I'm sure George Allen pulled a surprise with these five tackles. Obviously, man, the uh, strategy here is to uh, keep the Green Bay Packers in the hole as quickly as possible, stop the running attack of MacArthur Lane and Brockington by putting in those big guys and closing up the holes. They know that Scott Hunter is a little bit inexperienced, and in these uh, playoff games, experience sometimes tells the story. So Allen, who is... Uh, not particularly uh, willing to go orthodox, has pulled his first one. Now he has pulled Sistrunk out of there and come in with Myron Pontius with a pass situation here with a third down and seven. Waiting for it is Scott Hunter to pro set, and he's going back to throw. He looks, throws the swing pass the right flat. It's completed to Brockington. He's at the 25, he's at the 30. He brings it all the way up to the 34-yard line, and Pat Fisher brings him down for the Washington Redskins up on the 34-yard line. So it'll be a first down and 10 to go now for the Green Bay Packers from their own 34-yard line. And now, this truck is coming back in again, and he's going with McDowell, this truck, Brundage, Talbert, and Biggs. Got the five big men up front for the Washington Redskins. And coming out of there is the middlebacker, Myron Pontius, number 66 from Notre Dame. Wide to the right goes Carol Dale, who's caught 16 passes for 311 yards and one touchdown. He is the only wide receiver. And Scott Hunter now with a first down running from his own 34-yard line. And Hunter on a give this time to running back MacArthur Lane. And Lane was tapped back on the 32-yard line. And coming in there for the Washington Redskins with Bill Brundage, number 77, a three-year man from Colorado, and Jack Pardee along with Mike Bass to bring him down back on the 32, a loss of two. Washington defense stacking the line up there, bringing the cornerbacks also up uh, right on the end of the line and firing pressure through there as quickly as possible. Now, what they do uh, on a passing situation is, again, they'll take out one of the big tackles, drop the cornerbacks back, go into the zone defense, the short zone, on obvious passing situations. Harold Dale is flanked out wide to the right. John Brockington and MacArthur Lane are the running backs as Scott Hunter waits for the snap now from the center, Ken Bowman. He's got second and 12. He's back to throw. He looks and fires deep downfield, and it's way over the head of the intended receiver. And that was Leland Glass, number 46 from Oregon. And Roosevelt Taylor of Grambling was right with him. And so it goes as a long, incomplete pass. And now it might makes it third down, coming up, and 12 yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. We've got 11 minutes and 20 seconds of playing time remaining in the first quarter. No score. Glass is coming out, and John Staggers replaces him. Mark Starr is sending in a play right here with the ball on the 32. Staggers was just activated today, and he flanked out wide to the right side. Split to the left side now is Carol Dale with Rockington and Lane, the running backs right behind the quarterback, Scott Hunter. And Hunter is going back to throw again. Stays in the pocket. Throws out in the flat to Brockington. He's at the 35. Brings it up to the 37-yard line. And he is brought down by Chris Hansberger of the Washington Redskins, along with Ted Factor. And this crowd goes wild at Kennedy Stadium in Washington. So the Washington defense equal to the task on the first play in the first series. The ball now at the 30. Seven-yard line of Green Bay. No score in the first quarter. It'll be a punt situation for the Packers. And the Washington Redskins drop just one man deep. And that man is Alvin Heyman, number 13. Ron Whidbey is the kicker. He's averaged 41.8. His long kick, 64 yards. 
Henry Amen. standing back on about the 22-yard line. Gets a perfect pass from center and gets it away. And Heyman waits, watches it bounce around at the 25-yard line and lets it go. It finally rolls dead down on the 18-yard line. A good kick on the part of Whitby of 45 yards. And it'll be first down and 10 to go now for the Washington Redskins who take over on offense first and 10 from their own 18-yard line. The Redskins go back in the hole. The quarterback is Bill Kilmer. 120 attempts. This fella has completed 53.3% of his passes. Bill Kilmer has two flankers. Taylor's flanked out to the right side. Brown and Haraway are the running backs. Jefferson goes to the left side. And Kilmer calls the signals with a first down from the 18. He's back to throw. Fires a sideline pass to Taylor. He's got it at 28, and there's a flag on the play. He has just caught his 50th pass of the year. The penalty, I believe, Matt, is going to be against Taylor over there, too, for offensive pushing. That was the indication. So as uh, Gilmer went to the air the very first time and threw out here on the flat, the offensive pushing penalty against the, Green, against the Washington Redskins. So that's a break for Green Bay because the gain was up for about nine yards. So the walk-off will be against the Washington Redskins. We have Lynn House at center, LeVeg and Wilbert the guards. They have Hemmerling and Rock at the tackles. Taylor and Smith are the ends. The backfield, they have Kilmer, Brown, Haraway, and Jefferson. The Green Bay Packers defensively have Williams, McCoy, Brown, and Roche up front with Robinson, Carter, and Carr backing up the line. Buchanan, Matthews, Hill, and Ellis in the secondary for Green Bay. Clock shows 9.56 to go in the first quarter, and there's no score. A nine-yard penalty, so that'll make it first down and 19 yards to go. Half the distance to the goal, and waiting for it now is the quarterback, Bill Kilmer, with two wide receivers, and he gives it off now to Larry Brown. And Brown is upended at the 12-yard line. The tackle was made by Jim Carter, the middle backer from Minnesota. Now, you got to remember this about Larry Brown. Here's a fellow who missed the last two ball games, but still led the National Football Conference in rushing. What a great year he had. 285 carries, 1,216 yards. He averaged 4.3 every time he carried the football, and he scored eight touchdowns, and he caught uh, 40 passes. This fellow has been very busy actively for the Washington Redskins. The eye formation now with two wide receivers. Jefferson to the right, Taylor to the left. Here's Kilmer on a give to Brown, and Brown slips at the 11 and falls on the 12-yard line as he tried to cut back. In there was Alden Roach to make sure he didn't go anywhere. At uh, Minnesota, the uh, Green Bay defense, tough as usual, and as we mentioned, the Packers permitted an average of only 248 yards per game in compiling their record of 10.4. Meanwhile, Washington's defense, runner-up to Green Bay's, which was the best, permitted an average of only 256.8, so you've got Two fine, solid defensive teams down there on that field below us here at Kennedy Stadium. Dave Robinson has checked in defensively now for Green Bay. It's third down and 16 yards to go from the 12-yard line. And Kilmer on a give now to Brown. He breaks loose. He's at the 15 to 20 to 25. And he's brought down on the 25-yard line. He was stopped by Charlie Hall, and they had contained Brown at the line of scrimmage, but he broke a tackle and brought it all the way up to the 25-yard line, where it'll be fourth down. Al Matthews was also in on the tackle. It'll be fourth down and about four yards to go. And dropping back now for the Green Bay Packers, two safety men. Number 48 is Ken Ellis, who ran a very important punt back against the Detroit Lions earlier this year. The other man is Robert Hudson. And back in kick formation is Mike Bragg from Richmond. And he has averaged 38.5. His long kick was 62 yards. He's back in kick formation. And here is the boot. Beautiful kick. High spiral coming all the way down to the 33-yard line. Staggers it is. He's got it at the 33-yard line. Brings it back to the 35. Staggers brought it back to the 35-yard line. A kick of 42 yards. And so it'll be first down and 10 to go for the Green Bay Packers. And they'll be running from their own 35-yard line. And with the score, Green Bay nothing, Washington nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Green Bay middle linebacker Jimmy Carter thinks the Packers will be in better shape for today's rematch with the Skins. He points out in the first game a losing effort. The Packers were without injured cornerback Ken Ellis and safety Jimmy Hill played, but he was hurt. It was a tough thing for us. Hill had been hurt before the game and didn't have a real good game at free safety. And, and as you mentioned, Ellis separated the shoulder or had it majority loose and when uh, Thomas came in, it was a little rough on him coming in cold, but we really don't feel like uh, it would happen again.
again whether Ellis was hurt or not. I don't think the percentage of passes that were completed uh, can happen again. I think Kilmer was about 14 for 21, which is a pretty strong percentage. We really don't feel like uh, that'll happen again. Jimmy Carter of the defensive unit of the Green Bay Packers, as uh, Bob Reynolds and Van Patrick pointed out, the Packers were the best team, the most stubborn team in total defense yardage allowed in 1972. Bob Reynolds along with Van Patrick from Kennedy Stadium here in Washington. We're in the first quarter of this playoff game between the Washington Redskins and the Green Bay Packers, and there is no score. And as we get set to play again, it will be the Packers' ball after the punt, first and ten at their own 35-yard line. A defensive battle so far, just about what we expected. Here come the Packers out of the huddle, and here's Van again. All right, ready to go with Glass back in there as a wide receiver to the left. Carol Dale is put to the right. Rockington and Lane are the running backs. The quarterback is Scott Hunter. First down from the Packer 35. Hunter back to throw. Cocks his arm. Looks, throws a sideline pattern incomplete. Way short of the intended receiver, MacArthur Lane. Just no chance on that one. Mike Bass was over there. Had Mike been a couple of steps closer, he might have been able to pick that one off. So move it back to the 35-yard line, and Hunter's two out of four for 17 yards. It'll be second down and 10 to go, and now Williams comes in. Perry Williams and Brockington goes out. That's a change in the backfield for the Green Bay Packers. Remember, immediately following this game, we'll go to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Al Wester and Bob Halloran will broadcast the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. Wide to the right side is Carol Dale. Williams and Lane, the running backs. It's second and 10 from the Packer 35-yard line. And here is the give now to MacArthur Lane. Lane running an over right tackle, gets to the 36-yard line, and that is all. He got one yard on the play, and he was stacked up in there by Dyron Talbert, the big right tackle from the University of Texas and Bill Brundage of Colorado. The two tackles were charging in there and halted him on the 31, and now they're bringing Brockington right back in here and also another tight end. Garrett is limping a little. And they're taking out the tight end, and he's limping badly, uh, Buck, as he goes off. So let's check him. That's Lynn Garrett, the tight end, and Lamons has replaced him. Wide to the left side now is Carol Dale. And Leland Glass is split out to the right side. He splits the backs. He, the quarterback, Scott Hunter. He's got second down and uh, third down, rather, in nine. He'll go to the air. Back he goes to throw. Look and fires, and it is incomplete. And two men were covering Glass, Matt Fisher was the man who got a hand on the ball and clapped it down, and that brings up the fourth down again. And in to do the kicking for the Green Bay Packers will be Rod Whitby, and going back in the safety spot is Alvin Heyman. There's the difficulty of that zone defense, man, that we pointed out yesterday in the Steeler game as well. The free safety comes over. He's responsible to help with the man if the pass is short. He protects on the deep one. He came over to give Pat Fisher a hand who covered the receiver in his own zone, and it's tough, I'll tell you, to throw long against that zone. Kick formation, Ted Factor and Alvin Heyman are the deep men now for the Washington Redskins. Back in kick formation, the Green Bay Packers, Ron Whitby, and he gets it away. It's a low end over end kick, and Factor touches the ball. And Heyman makes a great recovery for the Washington Redskins. On the 31-yard line, that was a dangerous situation. That was a 30-yard kick, and Factor hit the ball, and the Green Bay Packers, the ball was live, and they went for it. But fortunately for the Washington Redskins, Alvin Heyman was on top of the football. And there's a timeout with the score. Washington nothing, Green Bay nothing, and now this word. The standings in the National Football Conference with the completion of the regular season last week. Washington finished the Eastern Division champion at 11-3-0. Dallas, the wild card runner-up at 10-4-0. And of course, they advanced to the finals next week by upsetting the San Francisco 49ers on Saturday, although many people don't look at it as an upset because Dallas was the slight favorite before the game, but in the closing moments, Dallas was way behind and their chances were nil. The Giants had a surprisingly good year. They came off a losing season a year ago and finished third at 8-6-0. and Then St. Louis, 4-9-1. and Philadelphia, a dismal 2-11-1. Green Bay won the Central Division title. The Pack, a big surprise this year, beating out Detroit. And Green Bay was 10-4-0. Detroit was 8-5-1. Minnesota, a disappointment at 7-7-0, and, and the Bears in the basement with not much offense aside from running back uh, Bobby Douglas at the signal calling slot. Chicago, 4-9-1. In the West, it was San Francisco, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New Orleans. More details on that later. 
Washington Redskin band entertaining this huge crowd here to 53,039. A complete sellout. No score. We've got just about six minutes and 32 seconds of playing time remaining in the first quarter. Washington with the football. First and ten at their own 32. Green Bay has one yard in four rushes on the ground. Well, that gives you an idea of that defense today. Waiting for it now is Bill Kilmer with two wide receivers, and Kilmer's going back to throw. Stays in the pocket and throws long, and it is incomplete. Intended for Roy Jefferson and a great defensive play by Willie Buchanan, the left cornerback, number 28, a rookie from San Diego State. Kilmer thought maybe he'd test that rookie, and the rookie was right there, and he had a little help over there also from Al Matthews. He has four interceptions this year. He's a six-footer, 190-pounder. Goes back to the 32. It'll be second down and 10 to go now for the Redskins from their own 32-yard line. That was Kilmer's first pass of the ball game. He threw one earlier, which was nullified by an interference call. Wide the right side is Jefferson. Charlie Taylor goes to the left, and Kilmer on a give to Larry Brown, and Brown's at the 35, goes under the 37, and is brought down on the 37-yard line. Larry Brown, who is really tough to stop. Alden Roche, the defensive right end of Southern University, and big Fred Carr from Texas of El Paso, Lee Trevino's hometown. Ball is spotted now on the 37-yard line. Again on the play of five. It'll be third down and five to go for the Washington Redskins. No score. First quarter, six minutes to play. Six minutes to go in the first quarter. And now two wide receivers again, and Brown and Haraway, the running backs. And here's Kilmer now back to throw. He looks. He throws over the middle, incomplete. Intended for Jefferson. And two men were right on top of Jefferson. And Kilmer was decked pretty good out there by Alden Roche. And he is stretched out on the field, and that could really be costly to the Washington Redskins. Roche really fired through there, Van. He's a big football player, 6'4", 260. And with the score tied, nothing and nothing, there's a timeout on the field. And it's a serious timeout as far as the Washington Redskins are concerned. Billy Kilmer is down, and he apparently for the moment is out. He was really sideswiped, uh, both left and right, just as he got that pass off. He was pinched off and smeared to the ground very, very hard by the uh, Green Bay pass rush. It wasn't a blitz. The linemen were coming and got through a uh, preliminary block. And just as Kilmer released the ball, he was hit high around the neck and also around the midsection from the opposite direction. And that can really wrench you. Billy uh, now up on his feet and walking to the sidelines. He was badly shaken on the play. But uh, he seems to be okay, probably had the wind knocked out of him. And uh, <laughs> he looks a little wobbly walking over to the sidelines. Now, we point out an interesting fact. The game is not being televised in the greater Washington area because of Pete Rozelle's ruling against uh, the TV blackout, the uh, appeal that was made in the courts. But we are picking up very hazily our monitor from Baltimore, which is getting the game. Well, he's a little groggy, Bill Kilmer, as he comes out. I believe he just had the wind knocked out. It's a punt formation, Mike Bragg. Fourth down and five yards to go. Sagger's one of the returners here for the Green Bay Packers, and here's the boot. And it's a beauty, I'll want to tell you. All the way down to the 13-yard line. The Packers bring it back to the 20, to the 25. And all down on the 25-yard line, the Green Bay Packers Ball carrier number 46 was Leland Glass, and that was a 50-yard kick. So mark it right on the 25-yard line of Green Bay and give the ball to the Packers and make it first down and 10. And Buck Jersey keep the glasses on uh, Bill Kilmer. Remember, Sonny Jerkerson is already out of there with a torn Achilles, uh, and he is on crutches. We saw him just a few minutes ago. Glass is flanked to the left side. Carol Dale goes to the right side. Washington and Lane are the running backs. First and 10, Green Bay from their own 25-yard line. And here's the give now to the big running back, Brockington, up the middle. He gets to the 28-yard line and is brought down there by Chris Hanberger, the linebacker on the left side from North Carolina, and Manuel Sistrunk, the left tackle from Arkansas A, M, and N. So mark that ball now on the 28-yard line. And here's a change. John Staggers is coming in, replacing Leland Glass as the split in for the Green Bay Packers. The clock shows four minutes, 30 seconds of playing time remaining in the first quarter. It's Green Bay nothing and Washington nothing, and the Packers are back in the huddle. Scott Hunter from Alabama, who has completed 87 out of 199 attempts for over 1,000 yards. And they've got those five big men up front again for Washington. McDowell, Brundage, Fishbrunk, Talbert, and Biggs. 
And now it is second down coming up and about seven yards to go. Rockington and Lane, the running back. Hunter back to throw and throws the bomb to Dale, and it's incomplete. Down on the 40-yard line of the Washington Redskins, and Pat Fisher was matching him stride for stride, but Hunter just threw it over his head. No excitement builds here at Washington's Kennedy Stadium, and we remind you to stay tuned after this one because more excitement coming your way as Mutual brings you the action from the Orange Bowl. Couple of changes now defensively. Number 29 coming in for the uh, Washington Redskins. That's Ted Vactor, the cornerback, coming in for one of the linebackers now. An obvious passing situation. Third down and about seven to go for the first down. No score. Four minutes and seven seconds of playing time remaining here in this playoff game. Two men dropping off now to cover Leland Glass over on the left side. Dale's on the right side. One-on-one -on -one with him with Pat Fisher. Now Baxter drops off. And here's the give to the running back by Carter Lane. He's up to the 35-yard line. And Ted Baxter in there to make the tackle. And it's a first down for the Green Bay Packers on the 35-yard line. Let's take 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Van Patrick along with Bob Reynolds, Buck Jersey, and our mutual broadcast crew at Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C. First down and 10 to go for the Packers. That's their second first down. They've got both receivers now on the right side, Dale and Leland Glass. High formation, Brockington and Lane, right back of the quarterback, Scott Hunter, who's operating with the first down on the 35, and to give us to Brockington, he's hit at the 36 by Bill Grundig, the three-year man, 270 pounds, six foot five, from the University of Colorado. And they'll mark the ball on the 36-yard line, where it'll be second down and nine yards to go now for the Green Bay Packers. Nice to have you with us today, wherever you are, across the nation or around the world, is Mutual Sports sends the National Football Conference playoff game from Kennedy Stadium in Washington. Rockington, in uh, three carries, has gained exactly four yards. Gives you an idea that battle going on down there in the pits, man, and it's tough. Factor has dropped out of there now. They've got a linebacker in, and here's Mike Bass dropping off one-on-one -on, -one on Leland Glass. Carol Dale Fisher's covering him one-on-one. -on -one. And now here's the give to the running back, Brockington. He runs right into Manuel Sistrunk, who meets him right at the line of scrimmage and shoves him all the way back to the 35-yard line. They will allow his progress to the 37, but that now will bring it up with a third down and eight yards to go. The clock shows now two minutes and ten seconds of playing time remaining in the first quarter. Sistrunk comes out and gets a tremendous hand. Glass comes out. Stagger replaces him. Harold Dale goes wide to the left. Staggers is deployed to the right side. And the quarterback, Scott Hunter, now has Rockington and MacArthur Lane behind him, and he has some split. It's third down, remember, and eight yards to go. And waiting for it is Hunter, and he takes it. He gives on the draw play to Rockington. Rockington is hit at the 39-yard line and brought down by Berlin Biggs, and that brings up the fourth down. Jack Hardy was also in on the tackle. The Green Bay Packers are forced to punt again, and George Allen leading the cheers on the sideline. And that defensive battle goes on down there below us. The Redskins along that front, McDowell and Brundage and Talbot and Verlin Briggs, and the, back, the linebackers of Party and Potius and Hamburger doing a super job. Back in kick formation goes Ron Whitby. Whitby is, gets the snap. Heyman is the deep man, and... Calling for a fair catch is Vactor on the 24. He was the short man. So that was a kick of 37 yards. Now let's check on Billy Kilmer and see if he gets back in there. You'll know by the crowd reaction. There it is. He's there. Bill Kilmer is back in there at quarterback. Well, we have uh, a minute and five seconds of playing time remaining here in the first quarter of this ball game. And the Green Bay Packers and the Washington Redskins are nothing and nothing. Washington has not made a first down. Green Bay has made two. We saw a defensive battle yesterday in Pittsburgh, Bob, and we're seeing another one today. Just about as expected, man, when you get the number one defensive team against the number two. Well, you can uh, count on this kind of a ball game. As we mentioned earlier, it probably might be the difference in this one. Certainly the breaks will be. But the arm of Billy Kilmer, the experience of this young man, against the inexperience of Scott Hutter. But you cannot rule out the enthusiasm of this Green Bay Cup, which came a long way this year after a, just a so-so season last year. 
Danny Devine certainly has them turned around. And as for George Allen and his Washington Redskins, well, he doesn't look to the future too much. In his opinion, the future is now, today. And this is today for him, I'll tell you. In Larry Brown, of course, he has the premier runner, player of the year, winner of the Maxwell Cup of Philadelphia, the Burt Bell Award as pro player of the year, captured the NFC rushing title, but lost the rushing title to O.J. Simpson by only 35 yards. Both teams with good runners, good receivers, and solid defense. First down from the 24-yard line for the Washington Redskins in high formation, and here's a give now to the running back, Larry Brown. He gets it to the 25, and that's it. He was tacked up right there on the 25-yard line. In there making the tackle was Dave Robinson, the linebacker on the left side, along with big Mike McCoy from Notre Dame. So mark the ball on the 25-yard line. Make it second down and nine yards to go for the Washington Redskins. The clock is running with 40 seconds of playing time remaining in the first quarter, and there's no score. Out of the huddle now, flanked out wide to the right side is Charlie Taylor. Jefferson goes to the left. The running backs are Haraway and Brown. Brown on the top of the eye formation, and it's Brown with the football. And he brings it to the 27-yard line, and there he is brought down. On the 27-yard line, Alden Roche, the defensive right end of the Green Bay Packers, in to make the stop. So that will make it now third down for the Washington Redskins. Skins have Taylor. In there is that split end, and Jefferson is the other flanker. Haraway has not carried the ball here in this first quarter. Brown has carried the ball six times, and he has gained 24 yards. Taylor wide to the right side, and there's the gun. That's the end of the first quarter with a score. Green Bay nothing, and Washington nothing. Now let's recap the Western Division final standings for 1972 in the NFC. San Francisco was the winner at 8-5-1, not a particularly impressive record. Atlanta finished second at 7-7-0. Los Angeles at 6-7-1. They were a big disappointment. And New Orleans in the cellar, as expected in the preseason polls, 2-11-1. One of the inequities of the wild card system is uh, obvious. Uh, when you look at the one-loss record of Dallas, the runner-up wild card team in the NFC, and the champion of the Western Division, San Francisco. Now, San Francisco finished the regular season with a poorer record than Dallas, but they won their division title. So they got the home edge yesterday. It didn't uh, matter, however, because Dallas came from behind with a tremendous rush to win it at the close at Candlestick, 30-28. to 28. But the inequity lies in the fact that Dallas, which did finish with a better record than San Francisco, does not get a chance at the home game in the NFC Championship game. That falls to either Washington or Green Bay. And Dallas and Green Bay finish with identical records of 10-4-0. So many might say, well, why should Green Bay get the home field advantage if they play the Packers next week? Uh, Dallas would not be the home team. They would have to be the visiting team. As a matter of fact, no matter who wins today, Dallas will be, because they are the wild card runner-up, the visiting team. So it will be Dallas at either Washington or Dallas at Green Bay next weekend. In the AFC, Pittsburgh will be the host team next Sunday, no matter who wins the game today between Miami and Cleveland. Well, we're set to resume play at uh, Robert F. Kennedy Stadium as we start the second quarter. There is no score, and here we go to Mutual's Van Patrick. Waiting for it now is Bill Kilmer with two wide receivers, two running backs, and back he goes to throw. Throws over the middle. It's completed at the 40-yard line to Jefferson. Jefferson's at the 41. Ken Ellis makes the tackle at the 41 at the first down for Washington. And that is their first first down of this ball game on the very first play starting the second quarter and it gained 13 yards. First and 10 to go now for the Redskins with Haas at center. LeVeg and Wilbur to guard. Rock and Hemmerlin at the tackle. Taylor is coming out of the huddle now and wide to the left side. Jefferson goes to the right side. High formation, Brown and Haraway, the running backs for the Washington Redskins. The Packers in a four-man defensive front with a 4-3 defense. And here's Kilmer, takes two steps back and throws a sideline pass. Taylor has it at the 48, he goes to the 50, goes on to the 49, and is brought down in Green Bay territory on the 49-yard line. He's just caught his 50th pass of the year. And he was chased out over there by Fred Carr, number 53, and Ken Ellis, number 48. And so it'll be a first down, uh, check it now. First down on the 49-yard line. The At least the linesman feel it is. They're breaking the chain in. He's already turned the down box around, the number one, so he's optimistic. And they bring it in. It's on the 49-yard line. They bring the chain all the way across the field. And we'll place it down now. 
and we will know in a moment, and the crowd will help us know, it's short. Looks like a few inches short of the first down from our vantage point and our mutual. No, it's the first down. There it is. First and ten to go on the 49-yard line. So that fellow over there holding the downs box has got a better measuring instrument. <laughs> so it'll be first down and ten to go now for the Washington Redskins from the Green Bay 49-yard line. First time they've been in that territory. That's uh, ten yards gained on that play. Wide the left side now goes Taylor. First time either team has been into the other's territory. Waiting for it now is Bill Kilmer. Brown and Haraway behind him in an eye formation. He pitches it to Brown. Brown cutting back at the 45. He's down to the 40. He's down to the 38. He's finally hauled down on the 37-yard line. A fumble. It's recovered by the Green Bay Packers. The Packers recovered the fumble. Let's get the man. Getting up from the bottom of the pile is Roche, number 87, a three-year man from Southern University. And Larry Brown had just ripped off another first down. And so, with the score, Green Bay nothing, Washington nothing. There's a timeout on the field. And a chance for us to give you a look at the final standings in the American Football Conference during the regular campaign completed a week ago. Miami, of course, uh, the toast of pro football, finishing unbeaten, first time in 30 years that's been done, at 14-0, a new pro record. The New York Jets finished runner-up in the Eastern Division at 7-7-0. Baltimore, 5-9-0. Buffalo at 4-9-1 and New England in the cellar at 3-11-0. Pittsburgh, the Central Division winner, and the Steelers really came on strong this year with a tremendous defense, particularly the second half of the season. Pittsburgh allowed the fewest touchdowns in all pro football this year, only 18. A total of 18 touchdowns allowed. Pittsburgh 11-3-0, Cleveland the runner-up, only a game behind at 10-4-0, Cincinnati at 8-6-0, and Houston with the worst record in pro football at one 13 and 0. A detailed look at the Western Division of the AFC later. Now back to the play. Ready to play now. First down from the 36 yard line for Green Bay. And Scott Hunter now with one wide receiver on the right. Dale. Hunter's back to throw. Throws one out the left back to Lane. He's got it at the 40 and has wrestled out of bounds by number 55, Chris Hamburger, on the 41 or 42. We'll see where they bring it in. The leading receiver. MacArthur Lane caught 26 passes, 285 yards, but ironically, he did not score a touchdown. Staggers comes in, and that could mean, of course, that uh, Bart Starr is coming up with another play. They say that young Scott Hunter, the youngster from Alabama, is programmed by Bart Starr. <laughs> Wide to the right side now. They send Carroll Dale. Staggers goes to the left. It's second down and about four yards to go from the 42-yard line. And waiting for it now is Hunter. And Hunter on a give to Lane. Lane off right tackle. Gets to the 44. And he is brought down by Jack Pardee, the linebacker. On the right side, on the 44-yard line. And Manuel Sistrunk, who saw his cousin yesterday, playing with the Oakland Raiders. 265-pound left tackle, six foot five. And now here is Glass coming back in. And Staggers goes out. And it's obvious they're calling the plays out there for Scott Hunter, the six foot two, 205 pound second year man from Alabama. The ball is just over the 43, which would make it the 44 yard line. It's third down, about three to go. Dale to the right side. And now split out the left side is Leland Glass. Rockington and Lane, the running backs for the Green Bay Packers. No score, second quarter, waiting for it. Scott Hunter, he's got it, and he goes back to throw. Looks, throws, and it is caught at the 43 yard line by Leland Glass. And he is tackled immediately by Mike Bass, but he got it to the 43-yard line and got a first down for Green Bay. So now the Packers are on the move. They're down on the 43-yard line. Leland Glass made a fine reception. He just maneuvered uh, Mike Bass and got in front of Mike at the 14-yard gain, and Glass goes out and Staggers comes in. Washington Redskins with the first turnover on the fumble recovered by Alden Roche. That's the first one. Wide the right side is Carol Dale. Staggers goes to the left side in a pro set with the two running backs, Lane and Brockington, right behind the quarterback. And the give now is to Lane. Lane tries the middle of that line, gets to the 42-yard line. And Manuel Sistrunk and Dyron Talbot, the two tackles, are in to make the stop for the Washington Redskins. He got exactly one yard on the play. Hunter is four out of eight for 37 yards. And now Bart Starr's calling him on every play, Bob. He's interchanging those split ends. They say about the uh, quarterbacking for the Green Bay Packers, of course, it's the know-how and the experience and the head of Bart Starr, who for many years was the great star of Green Bay, 
and the physical attributes of Scott Hunter. So you really have a combination quarterback out there. Green Bay has picked up 17 yards rushing and 11 carries. That's all. They've got the wide receivers on the right side as they flood the zone. And here's the give now to Brockington, trying to go wide. He's hemmed in and forced out of bounds on the 40-yard line. Mike Bass, Pat Fisher, in there to chase him out of bounds, along with Bill Brundage, number 77. So that ball is going to be marked on the 40-yard line, where it will be third down and seven yards to go for the Green Bay Packers in a big, big third down situation. And over along the sidelines behind the Packer bench, running up and down and exercising his foot, Jester Marco, the leading scorer in the National Football League. And on this third down situation, with about seven to go, from the 40-yard line of the Washington Redskins. If they move it down there short of the first down, we expect to see Chester Marco. Brockington, nine yards and six carries. Lane, only ten in six. Three wide receivers now for Green Bay. Two on the left side. Leland Glass is on the right side. And here's Hunter going back to throw. He looks, throws over the middle, incomplete. Intended out there for Brockington, and incomplete. And Chris Hamburger was really putting the pressure on. Nice to have you with us today, and we hope you're enjoying the ball game wherever you are on this Christmas Eve afternoon. We're in the nation's capital, Washington, D.C., with the Green Bay Packers and the Washington Redskins battling it out. And so now it will be fourth down and seven yards to go. And let's see what the Packers have in mind here. They'd like for Marco to split those upright. Green Bay's had the ball for 21 plays, Washington 11. And holding the ball for the Green Bay Packers will be Ron Whitby. The attempt will be made from the 47. The kick is in the air. It is hit the goal post. Can you believe that? The ball hit the goal post. One more inch and he would have had three points. That's DeMarco, who's 33 field goals and 128 points, has been exceeded by only one other exclusive kicker in National Football League history, Jim Turner, with the New York Jets in 68. It's the goal post. Well, with the score, Green Bay nothing and Washington nothing. There's a timeout on the field. The Western Division standings of the American Football Conference wound up this way. Oakland, 10 wins, 3 losses, and a tie. Kansas City, the big disappointment in the AFC, if not all the NFL this year, at 8-6-0. Denver finished at 5-9-0. And, and San Diego at 4-9-1. So the divisional champions were Miami in the east, Pittsburgh the central, Oakland the west. Cleveland was the wild card runner-up, the counterpart to Dallas in the NFC. For the record, for the 182 regular season games played in the NFL, the total attendance for the regular season was 10,612,864 paying customers. So that averaged out for the 182-game regular season schedule to better than 58,300 people per game around the league each and every Sunday and Saturday and Monday night, too. That's quite an average. Well, we're set for action. The Redskins with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line after the missed field goal attempt. Let's get back to Van. Go from their own 20-yard line after the 47-yard field goal attempt hits the goal post. Waiting for it now is Kilmer, and Kilmer gives it to Brown, and Brown is dropped on the 19-yard line by Bob Brown, the right tackle, who sort of shot the gap, Bob, on that play. is 6'5", a 265-pound seven-year man, the right tackle of the Green Bay Packers, and the ball will be marked on the 19. Larry Brown and eight carries gained 33 yards. And Haraway has not carried the ball today. And you know, they've got to be keying on uh, Larry Brown, and yet uh, they're not utilizing Haraway. But they're coaching. We were up here. <laughs> Wide to the left side now, they send Taylor. Waiting for it is quarterback Bill Kilmer. Jefferson is the other wide receiver in this high formation. And uh, there's a flag, and there's a broken play. Somebody moved in there that time, and it's a broken play. So let's see. Looks like, well, looks like it might be against the, each team, which would nullify it if it's true. Austin was in there at the tight end, and he goes out, and Jerry Smith comes back in. There's a big discussion right now on the play, but the official indicated. Bernie Ullman is the referee today, and he indicated both sides. So let's see what he's going to do. Illegal procedure, and they, they're going to nullify him. So they'll move. Oh, no, he's going to, he's going to call it against the uh, Washington Redskins. And it's going to be turned down by the Green Bay Packers. And the ball will be marked on the 21-yard line. 
and that will make it third down and nine yards to go for Washington. We have no score here in the second quarter with 10 minutes and 40 seconds of playing time remaining. Third down situation, Washington, one out of three. High formation, two wide receivers. Waiting for it, Bill Kilmer, and Kilmer on a pitch to Larry Brown. Brown following Haraway, turns the corner, and is chased out of bounds up around the neighborhood of the 28-yard line by Willie Buchanan and Clarence Williams, the left end from Ferrari View, and that brings up a fourth down. Buck, how many punts? We've had a lot of punts here in the first half of this ball game. Five punts so far. We've got a similar pattern, uh, Van, developing here that we had in Pittsburgh yesterday, which reminds me to remind you folks to stay tuned after the broadcast of this one here because Mutual will bring you all the action from the Orange Bowl in Miami as the Miami Dolphins take on the Cleveland Browns with Al Richard and Bob Allerance. That will be an exciting one, too. Back in kick formation goes Mike Bragg. Glass is back there with Staggers in the double safety spot. And here's the snap, and here's the boost. Beautiful kick, high spiral, fair catch is called for. And I want to tell you, Saggers had a little trouble with that one. 42 yards on that kick. And Saggers uh, staggered around yeah, for a moment. <laughs> I'll give you that line, man. I was going to use it myself. Saggers did a little stagger. So we got to get time out here now with the ball at the 30-yard line. Time out on the field with the score nothing to nothing. And this just in, here in the nation's capital, Chief Justice Warren Berger today pulled the final plug on an effort to lift the local TV blackout of the Washington Redskins Green Bay Packers game. Kick high, spiral, fair catch is called for. And I want to tell you, Saggers had a little trouble with that one. 42 yards on that kick. And Saggers uh, staggered around yeah, for a moment. <laughs> I'll give you that line, man. I was going to use it myself. Saggers did a little stagger. So we got to get time out here now with the ball at the 30-yard line. Time out on the field with the score nothing to nothing. And this just in, here in the nation's capital, Chief Justice Warren Berger today pulled the final plug on an effort to lift the local TV blackout of the Washington Redskins Green Bay Packers game. Uh, L.A. Washington attorney, rather, Robin Ficker, said Berger refused to order a Supreme Court review of the ruling by a three-judge federal appeals court upholding the right of the NFL to keep the Sunday game off local TV. The game, of course, a complete sellout, but was not shown on the local CBS TV outlet in Washington, WTLP. But as we told you earlier, we are picking up somewhat of a reception from Baltimore, Maryland, where it is being televised on Channel 2. That is about 44 miles north of Washington. So if uh, any Washington fans want to see the game, they have to go, oh, about 50, 60 miles away from Washington, really, to be realistic to see the game. And as you might imagine, motels and hotels outside the Washington area are doing a land office business for people who have rented rooms just for today to see this game if they couldn't get tickets to attend it in person. Back here at Kennedy Stadium in Washington now, we have a scoreless tie, 10 minutes and 26 seconds of playing time remaining in the first half. And when we play again, it'll be Green Bay's ball. First down and 10 at their own 30-yard line. It's crowd of... 53,039 watching expectedly for some break or two to happen in here and when you have a defensive battle like this going between these clubs it's the breaks that count on you the way that football takes a bounce for you yeah. here comes the 40 degrees here today Bob and very overcast but it's a great day for football the lights have been on since the start first and 10 Green Bay from their own 30 Dale to the right side is the only flanker Scott Hunter now on to give to the first back coming through Brockington, and he's going to be dropped right on the 30-yard line. Manuel Sistrunk was right there on top of him, along with uh, his teammates, Ron McDowell, and Talbert was also in there. They've got Brundage in there also, and Verlin Biggs. Got those five big men up front, and so far, that's working successfully. That had to be a broken play, the way uh, he handed off there to Brockington. So it'll be second down and 10 to go now, actually, as they get the ball back almost 2 to 30. So make it second and 10. Staggers to the right. Harold Dale deployed to the left side. Rockington and MacArthur Lane, the running backs in the pro set. Hunter waits for the snap from Ken Bohm in the center and takes it and goes back to throw. He looks and throws, and wide open is Dale at the 45, and he is tackled immediately by Brig Owen. But it's a first down for the Green Bay Packers on the 45-yard line, and that's four first downs, and I want to tell you, Carol Dale was wide open on that one. That was his 17th reception of the year in 15 yards. 
On New Year's Eve, over many of these stations, we'll be in the historical city of New Orleans to broadcast the Sugar Bowl. Penn State will be going against Oklahoma. Wide to the right side is Carol Dale. Leland Glass split to the left side in the pro set with Brockington and Lane, the running backs for Green Bay. And back goes the quarterback, Scott Hunter, throws, and it's caught by MacArthur Lane at the 45. He is down to the 42 and is stopped by Chris Hanberger on the 42-yard line, and the Packers are on the move again. Packers are right down on the 42-yard line of the Washington Redskins. And they have another first down. Packers go back in the huddle as Staggers comes in with a play, and Leland Glass goes out. 13 yards gained on that play, and now Myron Potty is coming in, and Manuel Sistrunk goes out. That's a change defensively, getting the linebacker in and leaving the four men up front. Hunter, six out of 11 for 65 yards. Staggers to the right side, Dale to the left side. Scott Hunter waiting for it now with the first down. On the 42-yard line of the Washington Redskins, Hunter going back to throw, stays in the pocket, throws, and it's caught in the 40. It's caught by MacArthur Lane, and Pat Fisher makes a tackle on him immediately. A gain on the play of only a couple of yards to the 40. They may put it on the, let's see where they place it down. It'll be on the 41, so he got only one yard on the play. It'll make it second down and nine yards to go, and Glass comes back in. And also, Pete Lamons, the tight end. The two running backs of the Green Bay Packers, Brockington and Lane, have caught five passes today. Three and two. Three for Lane, two for Brockington. So they're sending them out of the backfield on pass patterns and not leaving them back there to block, depending on that offensive line. And they've been doing a good job for Scott Hunter, who floods the zone to the left with two wide receivers. Waiting for it now is Hunter, and he gives it off this time to Brockington. That crack back block, and he gets down to the 38-yard line with it. And he picked up a couple of yards on the play. That's all. Brockington is brought down by Chris Hanberger. And Pat Fisher was blocked in there by Carol Dale, who delivered the crackback block that we've heard and read about so much uh, recently. So the ball is going to be marked on the 38-yard line, where it'll be third down coming up and a long six yards to go for the Green Bay Packers. Audius comes out, and Ted Vactor goes in with a third down situation, getting the prevent pass defense. Three out of seven for Green Bay on third down situation. Lane and Brockington with two wide receivers. Dale on the right, Staggers on the left, and Scott Hunter now with a third down and long six, and back he goes to throw. Stays in the pocket and throws deep to Staggers. He's got it. A great reception all the way down on the 15-yard line, and what a beautiful pattern he ran. He beat Mike Bass. And I tell you that Hunter laid the ball out there for him, Van, beautifully. Right along that sideline, he just pulled it in and stepped out of bounds at the 15. And so there was a big third down play. And the Green Bay Packers now with 6.31 remaining here in the first half are down at the 15-yard line. Good for 23 on that one. So the first serious threat of the ball game, if you want to take out the 47-yard field goal attempt by Chester Marco. And the Packers have it first and 10 on the Washington 15-yard line. No score here in the first half of this ball game. Carol Dale is the only wide receiver. He's out to the right side, and here's the give to MacArthur Lane on the sweep. He's at the 15. He's down to the 10. He's out of bounds. He might have stepped out on the 11 or 12. We'll wait and see where they mark it. Standing right on the 12-yard line is the headlinesman, a gain of three, and Myron Pontius ran him out of bounds. That was the old traditional Green Bay sweep left over from the Vince Lombardi days. So they're going to mark that ball now on the 12-yard line. It'll be second down and seven to go, and Manuel Sistrunk comes back in there defensively, and Staggers is back in in place of Glass. Hunter has been on target. He's completed six out of his last seven passes. Staggers goes wide to the left side. Over on the right side is Carol Dale. Rockington and Lane are the running backs as Scott Hunter brings them out with a second and seven down on the 13, 12-yard line, and here's the give now to uh, MacArthur Lane. He's down to the 10, and he is belted there by Pat Fisher and Chris Hanberger on the 10-yard line. But it will be third down and five yards to go now for the Green Bay Packers, who are threatening. Fisher a little slow getting up that time, and he ran into a lot of meat. Now, he's a veteran in that secondary. He's played a lot of years. Of course, this Washington team is loaded with this type of individual. Somebody said in one of the later games of the regular season that George Allen was going to play his youngsters in this one and rest the, not this one, but the last part of the season. And somebody said, well, if he plays his youngsters, they're all about 31 and 32. Each one of the running backs has carried the ball eight times. Rockington has gained 12 and lane 15 yards. 
Here's a third and five situation right now, and back goes Scott Hunter to pass. Gets great protection, throws, and batted down by Chris Hanberger, who had the ball right in his hand. It was intended right over the middle for the running back, Brockington, and I want to tell you, Hanberger had that ball right in his hand. Uh, Brockington just to drop back in his coverage position. The middle linebacker is responsible for the picking up the running back if they come through on the play. Brockington did, of course. And uh, Hanberger was right there. So Chester Marco, who missed one of 47, will try one now of 17. This is almost automatic for him. He has kicked 33 out of 49. The kick is up, and the kick is good. A 17-yard field goal. And with the score... Green Bay 3, Washington nothing. There's a timeout on the field. Now this. Well, there's the uh, difference in the ballgame thus far. The ability of uh, Scott Hunter with uh, Bart Starr calling the plays on the sidelines to read the Redskins' uh, sagging defense. You know, they came into this game today uh, with a departure from their normal defensive alignment. They're using five tackles up on the line. And, of course, when you've got uh, five up front, plus your linebackers close in, it leaves the uh, the deep secondary a little more vulnerable. And here in the second quarter, Scott Hunter has done the job and got the team downfield for Chester Markola booted through. The rookie from Green Bay won the scoring title in the NFC this year. Cornerback Ken Ellis led the punt returners. And Washington running back Larry Brown won his second rushing championship. So in this game, you have three performers who are uh, NFC scoring champions in some form or another. Marco, Ellis, and Brown are the only three NFC individual statistical champions who are in action this weekend. Mark Hall, of course, is a second-round draft choice out of Hillsdale, Michigan College, and he is a real bargain beauty. Uh, Brunet has dropped back along with Herb Mulkey for the Washington Redskins, and Alvin Heyman is also back there. They have three deep men to try and return the... The kick of Chester Morkall, who just booted the 17-yard field goal to break the tie and give Green Bay a 3 to nothing lead over the Washington Redskins. And here now is Markle's kick. Good high end over end kick. And Mulkey's in the middle, takes it about one yard deep. Brings it back to the 5, goes to the 10, 15, to the 20, the 25, to the 30, the 35, to the 40. And he's finally hauled down on the 40-yard line by Charlie Hall. A great run back of 41 yards on the part of Ted Mulkey. And now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Dan Patrick along with Bob Reynolds and wide the left side now goes Charlie Taylor. The Redskins have it first and 10 from their own 40. They trail 3 to nothing with 4.58 to play. Kilmer throws a sideline pass complete to Jefferson. He's out of bounds on the 49-yard line. A nine-yard gain on the play, and it will be a second down and one yard to go for the Washington Redskins from their own 49-yard line. The crowd starts to chant a goal. Clock now with four minutes and 54 seconds of playing time remaining in the first half. And Green Bay leading by a score of three to nothing. Nice to have you with us today, and we hope you're enjoying the ball game wherever you are on this Christmas Eve afternoon. Wide the left side, Brown and Haraway. Waiting for it is Bill Kilmer. And Kilmer on the call now with the two running backs behind him. Gives it to Haraway, and Haraway on his first carry is dumped at the 50. He got one yard on the play and is hit. And hit first by Clarence Williams. Also in on the tackle was Robinson. And I believe he got enough for the first down. That would be three first downs now for Washington. Coming in, number 87 is Jerry Smith, the tight end. Coming out of there is uh, Mac Alston. The ball is uh, almost smack on the 50-yard line. Out of the huddle now, wide the right side is Charlie Taylor, who's caught 50 passes this year for seven touchdowns. Roy Jefferson is split to the left side. He's from Utah, the I formation. Bill Kilmer who had his bell rung a little earlier in the ball game, gives it off to Haraway. He's at the 45. He's down to the 40. He's down to the 39. Al Matthews brings him down on the 39-yard line. It's a first down for Washington. Well, maybe, Van, they were just saving Haraway for the second quarter or late in it because, as you mentioned, he had not carried the ball at all during the first period. He's carried it twice now, gained no yardage for the first time, but picked up a first down there or close to it. It's just a matter of inches away. The ball is not quite 
to the Green Bay 40-yard line, and the Washington Redskins have good field position now. Second down in a matter of inches to go. They trail three to nothing with about 3.34 left to play in the first half. He had gotten down to that 39. They moved the ball back on him a little bit, and here's the give to Brown, and he's got the first down. He goes down to the 37-yard line before he's brought down. Larry Brown on that sort of stutter step of his, and Brown is shaken up. He's getting up very slowly, and he's limping badly, but he's going to try to get back in that huddle. Let's see what they're going to do. So far, George Allen has not made any move, and now they're going to take him out. Brown is coming out, and he's being replaced in the backfield. Herb Mulkey is coming in to replace Brown in the backfield. And the ball is on the 37-yard line. It is first down and 10 to go for Washington. A double wing formation, Mulkey and Haraway, the running backs. Haraway is the lone setback now. And here's the give to Haraway off left tackle. He is down to the 33-yard line. And brought down by Roche, the right end of the Green Bay Packers down on the 33. They can ill afford to lose the great running back, Larry Brown, who led the rushers to the National Football Conference. They're moving that ball down on the 33-yard line, again on the play of four yards. It'll be second down, about uh, six to go now for the Washington Redskins who break out of the huddle with Taylor to the left. Two minutes and about 20 seconds to go on the clock running. Wide to the right side is Jefferson, the eye formation. Waiting for it is Bill Kilmer, and Kilmer now is back to throw. He looks and throws deep, a post pattern is caught. Touchdown, Jefferson. Jefferson ran a beautiful post pattern, 33 yards on the touchdown play, 60 yards and six plays, Jefferson's third catch of the game. And this Washington crowd, as you could well imagine, standing and applauding their football team, will move 60 and six. Now we we'll get the tie for the extra point. 33-yard touchdown pass, beautifully thrown by Kilmer and a great reception. Kurt Knight will attempt, the kick is up, and the kick is good. The score, the Washington Redskins seven, and the Green Bay Packers three, and I want to tell you, Jefferson ran that pattern beautifully. A post pattern, he was heading right for that post, and Kilmer just made it right there. Beautiful play, there's no question about that. And you know, again, if, if you can chalk up that touchdown, not only the great reception, but the fine field position that the Washington kickoff return specialty team gave their ball club, and how important those specialty teams are. We've mentioned that many times in previous broadcasts, the importance of these teams, and the blocking which was set up for Herb Mulkey, who took the kickoff and returned it 41 yards to the Washington 40-yard line, giving the Skins good field position, was beautifully set up. As a matter of fact, if he'd have gotten one more break, he might have gone all the way on that one. And so again, you cannot mention too many times the importance of these specialty teams. The Washington team that time setting up the touchdown for them by giving them fine field position and Kilmer on that beautiful pass play of 33 yards, hitting Jefferson superbly with it. Nice kicking it, and it's seven and three with 2.06 to go. Washington out in front here at Kennedy Stadium in Washington. And Mutual will follow with another exciting one for you right after this one is over. When we'll go to the Orange Bowl in Miami to Al Westert and Bob Holloran for the action there as the Miami Dolphins, unbeaten, take on the Cleveland Browns. Jefferson has caught three for 55 yards. The kickoff, and here's Van. All right, Bob, and here's the boot. High end over end kick. Thomas and Hudson, they're down there. It's going to be taken by number 37. Ike Thomas back to the 15. He goes to the 20. He is hit and hit hard as he reaches the 21-yard line, and the tackle was made by the Packers right on the 21-yard line. That was John Jaqua of Lewis and Clark. So he was on an expedition. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd use that, so I thought I'd beat you to it. <laughs> They'll put it on the 21-yard line. It'll be first down and 10 to go now. The two-minute warning to the two coaches, Dan Devine of the Green Bay Packers and George Allen of the Washington Redskins. And Allen right now is conferring with the one of the officials along the sidelines. 
Exactly two minutes of playing time remaining here in the first half of this ball game. Being sent your way all over America by mutual sports and shortwave and by satellite around the rest of the world. But as Bob mentioned, it'll be Miami and Cleveland following this ball game. And then on New Year's Eve, what a party in New Orleans. I hope you'll remember to go to the game. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get a head start on them. The yeah, game is do. first. You know, we're talking about the Packers and their dramatic turnabout from last season, and indeed it was. They were 4-8-2 and two last year with Danny Devine and that young squad that averaged something like 3.8 months, years per man in the league, 4.4 on defense and 4.4 on, on offense. And that uh, turnabout can be attributed to many things. But the more obvious, certainly, are the improved defense, particularly against passes, although uh, there wasn't much they could do on that when it was beautifully thrown and Jefferson made a great, reception, uh, a great reception of it. Last year, they allowed 21 touchdowns passing, 298 points, and had 19 sacks. But this year, only seven touchdowns. Their improved kicking game, obviously. When they used to kick field goals at Green Bay, they used to hang out a flag and have a celebration. Not so anymore with the acquisition of Hillsdale's Chester Marco. Fewer turnovers, another reason for the turnabout of the Green Bay Packers. And perhaps the best running tandem in the National Football Conference. Rockington with the 1,027 yards that he picked up in Lane with 821. Certainly, I think you'd have to say that. Made them the most uh, potent, uh, shall we call it, infantry combination in the conference. Well, about the one would match that, Bob, and yardage would be uh, Mercury Morris and Larry Zonka, who each have gained 1,000 yards with a little bit of aid from the league office. Yeah. <laughs> Wide to the right side now is Dale, and split out to the left side is Leland Glass. First down from the 21-yard line, and Hunter now on a give to MacArthur Lane, and he brings it up to the 24-yard line, and Harold McClinton, who's in there as a linebacker, is the man who made the tackle. They've got Hamburger. McClinton and Pardee backing up the line now for the Washington Redskins. That will be a gain on that play of five, so let's make it second down and five to go now. Or oh, maybe six since the ball started from the 21. It's on the 25. And we pointed out so many times the National Football League statistics, if the ball splits between the 24 and the 25, they call it the 25. In other words, if it's over the hash mark, it's the next yard marker. Two receivers over on the left side. Rockington and Lane, the running backs. And waiting for it now is the quarterback, Scott Hunter. 7-3, Washington leading. And Hunter's back. Way back on the 12-yard line by Bill Brundage, number 77. A three-year man from Colorado. And he was in there on top of him. And brought him down, and that's the first sack of the ball game. And a whistle blew it dead on the 14-yard line. Timeout's been called by Washington. A loss of 10 yards on that play. So that will make it now. Third down coming up and about 17 or 18 yards to go. Washington calls time because they want to force Green Bay into kicking the ball with a minute and 10 seconds of playing time remaining. That's a lot of time. In case you joined us late, 17-yard field goal by Chester Markall in the second quarter gave Green Bay a 3 to nothing lead, but then Washington came right back after a good run back of the kickoff and then a 33-yard touchdown strike from Bill Kilmer to Roy Jefferson, and the extra point was booted in at 7-3, and that's the situation right now with one minute and 10 seconds of playing time remaining in the first half of the ball game before a jam-packed standing room only sellout crowd at Kennedy Stadium on a gray, dismal day, but nobody's noticed the weather. And here we go now, wide to the left side is Carol Dale. Waiting for it is the quarterback, Scott Hunter, with the two running backs right behind him. Hunter looking over that defense. Washington and Lane right behind him. Bunched in there and waiting for it and giving it off now. It's Hunter to Lane and Lane is hit as he reaches the 17-yard line, number 55. Chris Hamburger has really been outstanding in this ball game, hitting Brockington as he got to about the 17-yard line. Washington stops the clock again and listen to the crowd applaud the defensive unit. Standing on their feet. Similar to yesterday's ball game, Van. Both of the defensive units in that one got standing ovations when they came off. And the same thing true here today. You know, we were talking about Green Bay and their great improvement. Let's take a look at the Eastern Division Championship, which was the first for the Redskins in 27 years. The last division title in 1945 when they finished 8 and 2. They've come a long way under George Allen, but we're ready to go again. It's fourth down, and they will have to punt Green Bay. Seventh punt of the ball game. 
and Whitby is back there, and he gets it away. It's sort of a short kick off the side of his foot, hits on the 45, and rolls the wrong way. It's killed by the Packers on the 41-yard line, and that was a 29-yard kick. There's a break for the Washington Redskins, of course. That short punt of 29 yards will give the Skins good field position at the Green Bay, 41. And quickly, Kilmer brings them out and into action with only 53 seconds left. Kilmer back to throw. He throws one over the head of Haraway out in the right flat. That stops the clock with 48 seconds of playing time remaining. Stops the clock. It'll be second down and 10 to go with the ball on the 41-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Washington leading by a score of 7-3 to three over Green Bay. Kilmer was operating then with that two-minute drill, no huddle. They just lined up quickly, but of course, when he threw the incomplete pass, that stopped the clock, which was all right with him. That's exactly what he wanted to do. He threw it over the head of Haraway. Now Jefferson is out wide to the left side. They've got two wide receivers on the left side. And here's a pass from the sidelines to Jefferson. He's got it on the 35 and is out of bounds, and he's caught four today. That stops the clock. And uh, they'll mark the ball on the 35-yard line. It will be a gain on the play of about six, so it'll be third down and four to go for Washington from the 35-yard line of the Green Bay Packers. Kilmer is five out of eight for 71 yards, including the 33-yarder to Jefferson for a touchdown. 7-3, Washington leading, 44 seconds to go in the first half. Mulkey is flanked to the right side along with Taylor. They're in a double wing formation, and Kilmer is back to throw. He looks, he's in trouble, he runs out of it, he throws, it's incomplete. Incomplete. McCoy had the pressure on him, had him wrapped up back there, but Kilmer somehow got out of his grasp and threw incomplete to Charlie Taylor. So now it's fourth down, and in comes the kicker, Kurt Knight. His longest field goal of the year was 46 yards. And this one, I want to tell you, will be a, a long one. He's made 14 out of 30. And his long one, as I mentioned, is only 46 yards. So this one uh, will be around the neighborhood of the 43-yard line. So he has kicked them longer than this. From the 43, the attempt will be made. With only 38 seconds to go. The ball is spotted. The kick is in the air. It's got the distance all right. And it's good. Kurt Knight and the Washington Redskins are now leading the Green Bay Packers by a score of 10 to 3. Well, the short punt setting that one up, the Green Bay short punt, giving the Washington Skins good field position, and they capitalized on it by getting the 43-yard field goal with just 38 seconds left to play. And it just barely did get over, but that's all that matters. It is 10 to 3 now, the Washington Redskins out in front. As they set the ball up on the 40-yard line, Jefferson in this first half has caught four for 61, including that touchdown pass of 33 yards. And Billy Gilmer, five out of eight for 71 yards. Washington scored 10 points in a minute and 30 seconds. Now kicking off will be Kurt Knight. Hudson is deep along with Ike Thomas for the Green Bay Packers. 33 seconds to go, and here's the boot by Knight. And it's sort of a squib kick, bouncing around on the 12 and picked up there by Hudson. He's back to the 25, and he's brought down on the 25, and the flag is down. He was brought down on the 25-yard line by the Washington Redskins' Bob Brunet, but a flag was thrown. So let's see what this is all about with 26 seconds of playing time remaining in the first half. And the Redskins are leading Green Bay. It's a clipping penalty against Green Bay. So that'll be a walk-off. And the one thing the Packers didn't need, trailing by seven points as we come to the close of the first half. Second penalty of the game, one against each team. That'll put the ball back at the 12-yard line, and with 26 seconds left to play here in the first half, and Washington leading it 10 to 3. The question here becomes, do the Green Bay Packers gamble and put it in the air, or do they go off at halftime, trailing as they are by 7? Carol Dale, Dale is to the right side. To the left side now is Leland Glass. 
First down from the 12. That'll be interesting, Bob, to see if they play conservative here, and that's what they're going to do. Uh, straight ahead goes Scott Hunter, and the Redskins, of course, are not going to call any timeouts, and neither will the Packers. They'll just let the clock run out. So that answers your question for you. They're just going to be conservative and hope now to come back in the second half as they trail by seven. Hunter got it up to the 16-yard line on the quarterback sneak. He got four yards. We only got five seconds to go now. They'll never get another play underway. Counting off, 2-1, and that's it. There's the gun. That's the end of the first half with the score. Washington 10 and Green Bay 3. A most Merry Christmas and a happy, healthy, and prosperous New Year. Halftime, Washington 10, Green Bay 3. You're listening to Pro Football on the Parade of Sports. Washington dropping back to the receivers. The crowd starts to yell, settle back in their seats for two more periods of dramatic action here at Kennedy Stadium in Washington. And ready to bring you the action, Van Patrick. All right, Bob Reynolds, and here's the boot coming down to Mulkey. He takes it on the one. He's back to the 10, goes to the 15, and he is really hit with a shoulder tackle to the 17-yard line, and making the tackle is Larry Hafter. So it'll be first down and 10 to go now for the Green Bay Packers opponents for the day, the Washington Redskins, who are leading by a score of 10 to 3. The ball on the 17-yard line of Washington in possession of the Redskins. First down and 10 to go. Bill Kilmer's the quarterback. Brown was injured in the first half, and let's check him now and see if he's back. Haraway is the other running back, and Brown is back. Two wide receivers. Waiting for it is quarterback Bill Kilmer and Kilmer on a give to Brown. Brown is hemmed in. He cuts up field, gets only to the 18-yard line, and Fred Carr and Jim Carter are in there to bring him down for the Green Bay Packers. So it'll be second down now. Second down and nine yards to go for the Washington Redskins. Brown limped off the field in the second quarter, but he's right back out there in that lineup right now. They have House as the center, Wilbur and LaVega, the guards, Hammerling and Rock are the tackles, Smith and Taylor the ends, Haraway and Brown the running backs, Jefferson the wide receiver, and Kilmer the quarterback. They have Williams, McCoy, Brown, and Roche up front for Green Bay. Mac Austin is in there now at the tight end for Washington. And Kilmer rolling to the right, looks, rolls, and it is incomplete. And in there was number 80, Roy Jefferson, the intended receiver, and Al Matthews knocked him off his feet, and pass interference has been called on Green Bay. Not much question about that, man. There's a signal from the official indicating the pass interference. Of course, that puts the ball at the 25-yard line. And, of course, is an automatic first down as well. So Kilmer takes his ball club back into the huddle now. First down and 10 at the 25-yard line of Washington. Just underway here in the third quarter, and the Skins leading it 10 to 3. Jefferson wide to the left side. Charlie Taylor deployed to the right. A first down from the Redskins, 25. High formation, Brown and Haraway. And here's the give now to Brown, and Brown finally a little opening and brings it all the way up to the 32-yard line. Jim Carter made the tackle. And he just made a little cut there and got away from that big defensive man of the Green Bay Packers, Bob Brown. Managed to elude him and bring it up to the 32 and gain seven yards on the play. And Brown now in 12 carries as an even 50 yards. Ball on the 32-yard line of Washington, and it will be second down. About three yards to go. Wide the left side is Taylor. Split out the right side is Jefferson. Eye formation, Brown and Haraway in the eye. Waiting for it is Bill Kilmer. 10 to 3, the Skins lead, and here's a mix-up in that backfield. They really got crossed up back there. The ball finally wound up in the hands of Larry Brown, and Bob Brown made the tackle. Let's see where they're going to mark it. It'll be around the 30-yard line. It'll be a loss on the play of two. It'll make it third down and five to go now for Washington. That was a broken play. We've got 12 minutes and 46 seconds of playing time remaining in the third quarter. And the Green Bay Packers trail by seven. It's 10 to three. The winner of this game will meet the Dallas Cowboys next week for the National Football Conference Championship. The Steelers will meet the winner of the Cleveland-Miami game. Pro set, waiting for Kilmer. Third down, five, throws over the middle. That is incomplete, and the flag is thrown again. And that time, Jim Carter bumped the receiver, Larry Brown, at two pass interference penalties in a row. And two obvious ones also. No question about either of those. And, of course, the Packers now have got to quit making those mistakes. 
giving another first down to Washington up there at the 35 yard line. I imagine Dan Devine is talking to himself over there because these two interference calls, as you mentioned, have given them a first down just when it looked like they might contain them. Wide to the left side is Charlie Taylor. Roy Jefferson, who had a big first half, goes to the right. I formation, the pitch is back to Brown following Haraway, and he is dumped at the 36-yard line by big Mike McCoy of the Green Bay Packers. Boy, I want to tell you, one of the Packers was hit over there, and he is really shaken up. Defensive back Al Matthews, the safety man. Jerry Smith comes in now at the tight end. Matthews was really shaken up. The trainer comes out now to have a look at him. He's a three-year man from Texas A&I. They're talking to him, and he's walking off, but slowly, toward the sideline. Usually, in a case like that, Van, if somebody gets shaken up, as you know, they ask him, uh, how many fingers I'm holding up, or what day is it? And I presume that on a, a day like this, when the guy doesn't say it's Christmas Eve, is he will come out of there. <laughs> Charlie Hall has replaced him as the left safety man. He's from the University of Pittsburgh. Now Jefferson dropping off the left. He's being covered off on the left side by Ellis. One on one over on the right side. And here's Kilmer back to throw. He throws and it's incomplete to Charlie Taylor at the 48 yard line. Willie Buchanan was covering him one on one. And it's incomplete. It'll be third down and nine yards to go now for the Washington Redskins. From their own 36 yard line, they lead in the ball game 10 to 3 with 11.43 to go in the third quarter. We hope you're enjoying the game wherever you are. It's being broadcast all across America and around the world by satellite and shortwave. Ball on the 36-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Third down. Nine yards to go. The Sugar Bowl on New Year's Eve from New Orleans over many of these stations. Jefferson wide to the left side. Wide to the right side now goes Charlie Taylor. Waiting for it is quarterback Bill Kilmer with Brown and Haraway, the running backs in the pro set. Gilmer on a long count, goes back to throw, looks, throws, and this one is incomplete. He hit Charlie Taylor right smack in the hands with that when he couldn't hold it. Willie Buchanan was covering on the play and might have aided in the fact that Taylor, who's mad at himself, though, I see him kicking the dirt, Bob. I thought a pick it on Buchanan over that's the second time in a row. The first time, the both patterns will run very well, but Buchanan just stayed on him like an overcoat. Well, that brings up the fourth down of the kick situation, fourth and nine, and Mike Bragg. Ellis is deep now, along with Staggers for the Green Bay Packers. They're back around the 20 to 23 yard, respectively. Perfect pass from center. Bragg gets it away, and he booms it high and deep. All the way down to the 14 yard line, and Staggers has got it. Brings it back to the 20, to the 23, and it was a 50-yard kick, and there's a flag on the play. And injured on the play was Bob Brunet. He might have been clipped on that play. He's think, getting up rather slowly. I think we're going to get a clip call against Terry Williams, number 31 down there. That's what it looked like, man, around the 15-yard line. I said originally that that 43-yard field goal by Kurt Knight of the Washington Redskins with 38 seconds left to play in the first half was set up by a short kick by Bragg. Of course, they meant Ron Whitby, who booted it only 29 yards. That's the call, a clip against Perry Williams of Green Bay, moving the ball back to the seven-yard line. And so the Packers are backed up deep, Van. First down and 10 to go from the seven. That's 31 yards and penalties to only nine against Washington. First down and 10 to go. The Green Bay Packers come out of the huddle. Carol Dale is deployed to the right side. Set out to the left is Leland Glass. Scott Hunter now with Brockington and Lane, his running backs in the pro set. Waiting for it is Hunter. And Hunter takes the ball and starts back and is dumped back there, and somebody's going to be offside. This truck went barreling through there along with Ron McDowell, so let's see where the penalty will be. The Redskins uh, went charging across, so I believe it'll be against the Washington Redskins. So it'll be a five-yard walk-off for illegal procedure against Washington. That <laughs> official, he wound up and almost gave it to Green Bay. And then he turned and moved it uh, five yards to the 12. First and five now for the Packers from their own 12. 
penalties have hurt Green Bay, man. They had a couple of interference calls that gave uh, Washington a chance to move it. And then on that long front, the clip hurt him again. They back deep. It is first down and five to go from the 12 with 11.26 to play in the quarter. And the give is to Lane, and he gets to the 13, and Pat Fisher makes the tackle right there for Washington. He got just about a yard on the play, so it'll be second down and four to go now for Green Bay. The score is Washington 10 and Green Bay 3. 11 minutes and five seconds to go in the third quarter at Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C. Out of the huddle now, and over the ball is Bowman. Luke and Snyder, the guard. Times and Hayhoe, the tackles for Green Bay. Wide, a party of Sandberg and Pardee in there backing up that line. Waiting for it now, Scott Hunter with a second down and four situation from the Green Bay 13. And now he gives it off to Brockington, and Brockington is stopped at the 15-yard line. Dyron Talbert is the man who went smashing in there from his right tackle post along with Manuel Fistrunk. And they brought him down right on the 15-yard line. So now it will be third down. And the ball is resting on the 15-yard line, about two to go, with 10-18 to go in the third quarter. And the Packers are back in the huddle again, inside the five. Out of it they come with Carol Dale deployed to the right side. And he is the only flanker, and Pat Fisher drops off to cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Rockington and Lane, the running backs are split in the backfield as Hunter gives the long cadence count and hands the ball off now to Lane. On the sweep, he is at the 20, the 25, the 30, and he is finally forced out of bounds. Up around the neighborhood of the 32 by Roosevelt Taylor, and that will be a first down now for the Green Bay Packers on the old-famed Green Bay sweep. And probably the finest bit of running we've seen so far this afternoon, Van. Oh, MacArthur Lane, 6'1", 220 pounds from Utah State. Really put his shoulder down, missed a couple of guys, and picked up 18 yards on it and got him a little better field position. Up around the 33-yard line. And that's the longest run of the ball game mm -hmm. from scrimmage. Larry Brown had one, but he fumbled the ball. Wide to the left side now, staggers along with Carol Dale. High formation. Hunter with the first down up on the Green Bay 33-yard line. Washington with those five men up front, and they give the ball off to Lane, and Lane is to the 37-yard line with it and brought down on the 37. In there on the tackle for the Washington Redskins was Manny Sistrunk again. Boy, he's played a whale of a ball game as that extra front man up there. They're using five men up front most of the ball game. McDowell, Sistrunk, Brundage, Talbert, and Big. Here's Potters coming back in, Myron Potius. It'll be second down now and six yards to go. Glass is back Brundage. in. Glass. Glass is coming. Yeah, I was going to say Glass has come back in, too, for Green Bay coming out wide on this side for Staggers. And now Dale is on the left side, and waiting for it now is the quarterback, Scott Hunter. Second down. Back goes Hunter to throw. Stays in the pocket, throws, and this one is incomplete. He had his man, Leland Glass, open, but he just couldn't hit him, that's all. He had him open. Bill Luke was doing a good job of blocking there on that uh, left guard slot. He's a 245-pounder, six foot four, from the University of Arizona. Now coming back in is Brundage, and coming back in is McLinton. Sistrunk comes out, and Potius comes out. That's defensively for Washington. Myron Potius. Glass and Staggers continue to change as they bring in plays. Carol Dale is wide to the right side. Staggers is split out to the left side. He caught a big pass in that first quarter, first half. Waiting for it is Hunter. Throw set. He's going back to throw. Stays in the pocket and throws one over the head of the intended receiver, blocking him. He just missed him again. He threw that one poorly. That's the first one that he threw real badly. He just uh, had him out there, but he couldn't hit him. Staggers, or rather Glass's uh, reception just previous to this, he ran straight down and West to cut to the sidelines, but he went a little deep. And Hunter was under some pressure, so he had to get rid of it quickly, and uh, Glass couldn't get back to it. So that brings up a fourth down now. Still about 8.58 to go in the third period, and Washington leading Bay, Green Bay 10-3. Mulkey and Alvin Heyman go back now as the kicker 
Whidbey is in there for Green Bay, and he'll kick it from the 25. He boots it. Another one of those uh, short kicks wobbles around, but he gets a good roll. Heyman's got it at the 28. He's going to be tackled immediately. He was tackled immediately in there for the Green Bay Packers making the tackle. Number 51 was Larry Hafner, and that was a 38-yard kick. So it'll be first down and 10 to go now for the Washington Redskins. And with the score, Washington 10, Green Bay 3. There's a timeout on the field now this. And a chance to look at what occurred in college uh, football on Saturday. There was a game played, the second annual Fiesta Bowl. And uh, amazing halfback Woody Green, who looks like a uh, sure bet to go high in the next pro draft. Woody ran for four touchdowns as offensive-minded Arizona State outscored Missouri 49-35 to at Tempe, Arizona. Green scored in the first quarter on runs of 2 and 12 yards, and he was hot again in the fourth period from 17 and 21 yards out. Quarterback Danny White threw a pair of scoring passes to Ed Beverly, covering 34 and 53 yards, and fullback Brent McClanahan powered one yard for the other Sun Devil score. Quarterback John Cherry threw for two touchdowns to Chuck Link, and Mike Fink raced 100 yards on a kickoff return to pace the Missouri offense. Arizona State winds up the year with 10 wins in 12 outings. The Missouri Tigers of the Big A concluded with a 6-6 six six record. And for the record, ASU set a one-game mark of over 700 yards total offense. National Football League playoff action being brought to you through the facilities of Mutual, coast to coast and overseas. 10 to 3, Washington leading Green Bay. Washington with the ball, first down and 10 at their own 27. Out of the huddle now with two wide receivers, Brown and Haraway, the running backs. Kilmer on the give now to uh, Brown, and Brown is going to be dumped on the 27. No gain on the play, and Jim Carter, the middle backer from Minnesota, is the man who made the tackle there for Green Bay. Remember, immediately following this game, we'll go to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Al Western, Bob Halloran on hand for the Cleveland Browns, the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins winners of 14 straight games, a Cleveland Browns team which came on with a rush after losing their first six preseason games. Young Mike Phipps has brought uh, Art Modell's team right into the playoffs. Wide the left side now is Charlie Taylor. High formation. Here's Kilmer. Kilmer now gives it off to Brown. Brown looking for running room is going to be dumped right on the 27 by Big Fred Carr. From Texas of El Paso, 6'5", 240 pounds, and he stayed right with him. Brown's getting up a little slowly. I don't think he's at 100%, Bob. No, I was just going to say, Van, I don't think he's operating at uh, peak efficiency. He missed the last two regular games of the season with that injury, and after he got racked up early in this one, uh, although he's in there playing with the great determination that he has, the great football player that he is, I strictly concur with you that I don't think he's 100%. Taylor wide the left side, Jefferson to the right. Brown in 16 carries has gained 48 yards. Bill Kilmer now. Winners of 14 straight games, the Cleveland Browns team, which came on with a rush after losing their first six preseason games. Young Mike Phipps has brought their Art Modell's team right into the playoffs. Wide the left side now is Charlie Taylor, high formation. Here's Kilmer. Kilmer now gives it off to Brown. Brown, looking for running room, is going to be dumped right on the 27 by Big Fred Carr. From Texas of El Paso, 6'5", 240 pounds, and he stayed right with him. Brown's getting up a little slowly. I don't think he's at 100%, Bob. No, I was just going to say, Van, I don't think he's operating at uh, peak efficiency. He missed the last two regular games of the season with that injury, and after he got racked up early in this one, uh, although he's in there playing with the great determination that he has, the great football player that he is, I strictly concur with you that I don't think he's 100%. Taylor wide to the left side, Jefferson to the right, Brown in 16 carries has gained 48 yards. Bill Kilmer now with a second down and 11, third down 11 situation is back to throw. Stays in the pocket, he's in a little trouble back there. He runs out of it, he's caught by Mike McCoy from behind at the 21. McCoy grabbed him from behind at the 21 yard line. So that'll bring up fourth down now and 16 yards to go for Washington. First sack now for Green Bay of Bill Kilmer. Seven minutes and 19 seconds of playing time remaining. Daggers going back with Leland Glass. Third down situations. Washington has converted only one out of six tries today and Green Bay is five out of 12. Now back in kick formation is Mike Bragg. His longest kick of the year, 62 yards. His average on the season, 38-5. 
Waiting for the snap. He gets it. And booms it high. Gives him plenty of time to get down to cover. Fair catch is called for by Saggers. And he grabs it right on the 44-yard line. That was a kick of 34 yards. So it'll be first down and 10 to go now for Green Bay from their own 44. And they've got good field position, Bob. Yes, they have. Now we'll see uh, whether or not we can get something going. But there's a timeout with the score. Washington 10, Green Bay 3. Now this works. In pro action in the NBA on Saturday, the Boston Celtics won the fight, but they lost the game. The Milwaukee Bucks rolled up a 21-point advantage and then held off a late Boston rally to post a 104-98 win. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, as usual, led Milwaukee with 26 points. This game was spiced quite a bit by a first-quarter fight, and we mean a fight between Boston's Dave Cowens and Milwaukee's Bob Dandridge. Many times these pros square off and nothing comes about it. But uh, Saturday night it was different. Cowens, a very muscular center for the Boston Celtics, and by size, height-wise, anyhow, a, a rather small center if you compare him with the Chamberlains and others. Cowens, uh, a man with a lot of muscle, decked Dandridge with a combination of punches, and the Milwaukee forward required several stitches for lacerations of the mouth and lip. But as we said, Milwaukee won the game. Elsewhere, Golden State down the Chicago Bulls, 127-109. Atlanta beat Philadelphia, 124-112, and the Bullets beat Detroit, 104-97. Green Bay's ball, first and ten to go from their own 44-yard line, and out of the huddle they come. Washington leading by a score of 10 to 3 with 6.50 to go in the third quarter. Two wide receivers. Waiting for it is Scott Hunter. He's got Brockington in lane as the running backs, and he gives it off now to Brockington, and he's dumped on the 42, 43 yard line. Making the tackle was Ron McDowell along with Verlin Biggs. And they bring him down on the 43 yard line, a loss of a yard on the play, and in comes Brundage now to play that tackle again. Coming out of there, Sis drunk. Eleven carries and fifteen yards. That's almost unbelievable for Rockington, isn't it? Eleven and fifteen. Well, that tells you what kind of a defense that Washington Redskins have thrown up against that running pair of Rockington and Lane. Second down and twelve yards to go with two wide receivers. Scott Hunter now goes back to throw, stays in the pocket. And he's in trouble. He's hauled down back on the 36-yard line. That goal went in there along with Talbert and Biggs. And I want to tell you, they had to rush on there. Well, they may call this Washington Redskin the over-the-hill gang, but I'll tell you, they're far from it in there. Limping off the field a little bit is Bill Brundit. This Washington club is there's no tomorrow for them. This is it. The future is now, as George Adam likes to say. This marks his first, uh, fourth appearance, incidentally, in a championship playoff game in his seven years as head coach. The Rams were in playoff games twice. And today, of course, is the second time in a row for the Washington Redskins. Packers have lost the playoff game in what now, Bob? Nine games? 67, I think. 1967. Uh -huh. Blast to the right side. It's a third and 18 situation from the 36. And there goes MacArthur Lane right up the middle. Fights his way to the 46 and fumbles the ball. But the whistle had blown. McDowell and Hamburger got him, but the whistle had blown. Loud boos, naturally. <laughs> Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. now in 13 carries 51 yards he's the leading rusher in the ball game this is Van Patrick along with Bob Reynolds Buck Jersey and our mutual broadcast crew at Kennedy Stadium punt formation and here's Whitby's boot good spiral aiming for the sidelines and over the shoulder catch by Mulkey he's back to the 15 to the 20 and he goes out of bounds back there it is and he went out of bounds on the 22 yard line There's a flag on the play. There may be a clip over there. I noticed one of the Packers is stretched out along the 25-yard line. Looks like McCoy. Buck, check him, will you? It looks like Big Mike McCoy at the 25-yard line. It's a clipping penalty against the Washington Redskins. Let's see who it is. That was uh, pure, pure for it. 
Dave Purifoy from uh, Eastern Michigan was a man evidently who was clipped and uh, he's shaken up over there. He's along the sideline. And so the walk-off against the Washington Redskins moves the ball back to the 11 or 12. They're going to put it on the 11. So they'll start moving from their own 11-yard line. The clock shows four minutes and 33 seconds of playing time remaining here in the third quarter of this ball game. They finally got the injured player over there. He's on his feet, but he was really shaken up. Pure for it. We were talking, Van, about the Packers and their postseason games. They've won nine straight, actually. Their last loss, I said, in 67 was in 1960, of course. Uh, that was against Philadelphia. Their nine-game streak was uh, accomplished with victories over the Giants in 61 and in 62, the Colts and the Browns in 65, and the Cowboys and the Chiefs in 1966, and the Rams and the Cowboys and the Raiders in 1967. So it was 1967 that their last one, but they have won nine straight so as we get set to play again the washington skins are backed up deep they'll operate from their own 11 yard line first down and 10 from that point with 433 remaining to be played here in the third quarter and the skins leading at 10 to 3. now jefferson goes out to the left side split to the right side is charlie taylor brown and haraway the running backs for washington and here's kilmer with that quick sideline pass completed over there to taylor Taylor is out of bounds. Buchanan forced him out of bounds up around the 16 or 17-yard line. Wait till they bring it back in and see where he places. It'll be on the 17, a gain of six. A gain of six yards on the play. It'll be second down and four to go now for the Redskins. Clock shows four minutes. 25 seconds of playing time remaining. Kilmer, six out of 12 for 77 yards today. Jefferson to the left. Deployed to the right side is Charlie Taylor. Bill Kilmer, the quarterback, with Brown and Haraway right behind him in the pro set. 10-3, Washington leading. Long cadence count. And he gives the ball off to Haraway, and he's going to be stopped on the 16-yard line. Stopped in there by McCoy and Carter. That's about the longest cadence count of the year, isn't it? Surprised he didn't draw somebody offside with that one. Place the ball on the 16-yard line. It'll be third down coming up now. Third down, about uh, five yards to go. Series originated on the 11. It's now on the 16, so it all adds up to third and five. Redskins back in the huddle on third down situations. Washington has converted one out of six fives. Jefferson to the left side. And on the right side is Charlie Taylor. Silver looking over that Green Bay defense. They've set up there now in a five-man line, and back goes Kilmer. He throws one deep to Jefferson, and it is incomplete, and a great defensive play by Ken Ellis. He did a job. Oh, and Jefferson thinks this should be pass interference call, and he's having a word or two with the field judge back there. Well, that was a fine defensive play by Kenny Ellis, even though the crowd disapproves of it. Ellis was with him all the way, stuck up his arms at the last moment. But they are complaining, Jefferson is, that he did it with his back to him. But uh, the officials said, nope, it's a good, good defensive play. So the ball goes back to the line of scrimmage. And coming up, the 11th punt of this ball game. Mike Bragg is back in kick formation, and uh, Leland Glass and Staggers, check it now, it's Ken Ellis back there again, along with Staggers. Here's the snap and the kick, and he booms it way up the field, a beautiful spiral. Staggers has it on the 27th, gets back to the 30. Gets back to the 38-yard line and is hauled down. That was a 55-yard kick. With a score, Washington 10, Green Bay 3. There's a timeout on the field. In the ABA Saturday night, the streaking Kentucky Colonels and the San Diego Conquistadors continue to travel in opposite directions. The Colonels, who are red hot, beat San Diego 116-105. That is their 13th win in their last 14 games. At the same time, it was the Q's 13th loss in their last 14 Dan Issel scored 32 points and had 12 rebounds for the Colonels. Teammate 7'2", Artis Gilmore, added 26 points and 27 rebounds. When Issel and Gilmore are on their game, Kentucky is unbeatable. Elsewhere in the ABA, it was Carolina, the Eastern leader, 123, Utah, 117, the Virginia Squires, 112, the Dallas Chaparrales, 107, and the Memphis Tams, 105, the New York Nets, 103. 
Incidentally, the Denver at Indiana game was postponed due to a lighting failure, which resulted when a taxi cab ran into a utility pole outside the Indianapolis Coliseum Saturday evening. Well, we're back to action at Kennedy Stadium. Here again, Van Patrick. Washington tried and uh, didn't gain. He was stopped. No gain on the play. So now it's second and ten. Here's Scott Hunter on a give now to Lane. And Lane is at the 40, the 43, and he is thrown down by McClinton. On the 43-yard line, a gain on the play of five. Third down and five yards to go now for the Green Bay Packers. Washington leading by a score of 10 to 3. Two minutes of playing time remaining in the third quarter at Kennedy Stadium in Washington. The Miami Dolphins and the Cleveland Browns will follow this one from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Al Wester, who flew all night from San Francisco, where he described that exciting game yesterday, is on hand along with Bob Halloran. Five out of 13 third down situations converted by Green Bay. Glass to the right side. To the left side is Carol Dale. Hunter going back to throw. Looks, throws, and it is batted away by Pat Fisher. Right out of the hands of Leland Glass. What a defensive play he made. Ted Factor's going back with Alvin Heyman. It's fourth and five for Green Bay, and the punter is in there, Ron Whitby, who's averaged 41.8 this year. One minute and 26 seconds to go in the third quarter. It's 10 to 3, Redskins. Back in kick formation now. Ron Whitby from the University of Tennessee, where Bill Battle holds forth. And here's a kick almost blocked. And a fair catch is called for on the 20, and that's going to be a penalty. As number 88, Garrett, ran right into the man making the fair catch. Ted Factor, so it'll be a penalty assessed against the Green Bay Packers. 38 yards on the kick, and that's the type of penalty that hurts, one that's not called for. The man had called for the fair catch. Of course, Garrett didn't mean to do it either. He just had the momentum going, and he couldn't stop. So he just ran right into him. So it'll be a penalty walked off against the Green Bay Packers. Severson is the man who almost blocked that kick. That moves the ball all the way up to the 35-yard line, where it'll be first down and 10 to go for Washington from their own 35, with a minute and 18 to go in the third quarter. Jefferson moves out to the left side. Charlie Taylor split to the right side. Waiting for it now is the quarterback, Bill Kilmer. Brown and Haraway are the running backs. Out the center. And here is a flag, and Kilmer is sacked. Back on the 28-yard line by Bob Brown, but a flag went down. They had good coverage over there, Green Bay, on those receivers. Minute 14 to go in the quarter, and uh, flag was down. Let's see what it's all about. Offside, Green Bay. That'll move the ball to the 40-yard line, where it'll be first down and five to go. In the way of penalties, Green Bay's had six of them for 51 yards. Washington has had three for 25 yards. And they've hurt Van, too, those penalties against Green Bay. We were mentioning them before, a couple of clipping penalties, a couple of interference calls against them. One uh, on interference on the fair catch. And here's one here, which gives Washington, of course, a first down and five at their own 40-yard line. They hurt. Give you an idea to the defense, there have been exactly three first downs on both sides in this third quarter. Yeah. High formation, two wide receivers. Kilmer gives it to Brown. Brown's at the 45. He's at the 50. He's all the way down to the 46-yard line. And Dave Robinson makes the tackle, and he really sped through there, didn't he? He had a nice hole opening up for him, too. And, of course, you give him a little bit. He's still limping. As we mentioned earlier, he picked up 13 on that one. But just think if he was in top physical condition, what he could do. He had a hole there, and he picked up the yardage. And Danny Devine, a little uh, concerned, walking up and down the sidelines, all the way down to the 30-yard line now, talking to one of the officials. Out of the huddle. Taylor on the left, Jefferson on the right. First and 10 in Green Bay territory. On the 46, waiting for it is Kilmer. Kilmer on a give now to Haraway. He's got a hole off left tackle. Is down to the 42. 
He got about four on the play, and he was stopped by Roche, the right end. Clock shows 20 seconds to go in the quarter. Now the Redskins go back in the huddle. The time is running out. I don't think they'll get another play on the way before the end of the quarter. And that's all right with them if they don't. So the gun will pop in a moment. Two seconds, one. There's the gun. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Washington 10 and Green Bay 3. Back here at the County Stadium in Washington, D.C. Mutual bringing you the action. The Washington Redskins leading the Green Bay Packers 10 to 3. A defensive battle we expected to see. A defensive battle we told you about before the kickoff with what would be what we would be looking for here, and we've had it. And you talk about defense, the 218 points yielded by the Redskins this past year is the fewest in the National Football Conference, and Green Bay was second, and so it's indicative. Green Bay has three points on the board, that's all, a 17-yard field goal. And the Redskins coming up with a 33-yard touchdown pass from Kilmer to Roy Jefferson and a 43-yard field goal by Kurt Knight, and that's been it. Eight first downs for Washington, seven for Green Bay. Ten yards difference on the ground between these clubs. 84 yards for Washington, 74 for Green Bay. And in the air, just two yards difference. Washington, 71 yards. Green Bay, 73. It's that tight. Wide to the right side is Charlie Taylor. Second down now, and about six yards to go. Waiting for it is Kilmer. High formation, two wide receivers. And Kilmer now, and a give to Haraway. He is off left tackle all the way down to the 35-yard line. First down for the Washington Redskins. Tackle made by Fred Carr and Charlie Hall of the Packers on the 35-yard line. Well, we've got a lot of sports coming up your way over many of these stations from Mutual Sports. We'll be covering most of the PGA golf tournaments and the major tournaments, of course, the National Open. We'll be getting reports on the Masters for you, the PGA tournament, and NBA basketball. Will all be coming your way. Wide to the right side now is Charlie Taylor. Split to the left side is Jefferson. Eye formation again. The top of the eye is Larry Brown. First and ten, and there is a great defensive play by Bob Brown. He got Haraway before he got the ball. That was a great play. He just busted through there as the Kilmer handed off to him. Why Brown was right there to upend him. Six five two hundred and sixty five from Arkansas A M and N. He's another one of those fellows, isn't he, Bob, where they said, where does he sleep at the hotel? And they said, anywhere he wants, he wants to. to. <laughs> That's right. That was Bubba Smith's great line. Where do you sleep at the, uh, the dormitories at any place I happen to want them? <laughs> Second down now and 11 yards to go. Here's Kilmer on a give to Brown. He got the block from Haraway. He's down to the 30. Down to the 30, and Roche is the man who made the tackle for Green Bay. Boy, he's played a tough defensive ball game along with Brown. Mike McCoy marks the ball on the 30-yard line. It'll be third down and five yards to go now for the Washington Redskins. We're in the final quarter with 13 minutes and 15 seconds of playing time remaining. Washington leading by a score of 10 to 3. Out of the huddle, wide to the left side is Charlie Taylor. To the right side now is Roy Jefferson. High formation again. And they have not thrown to that tight end Jerry Smith today. And he's caught 21 passes going into this game. Here's Brown down to the 27-yard line, going right up the middle. And Mike McCoy is the man who made the tackle, along with Dave Robinson, and the kicker is coming in. It's fourth down for the Washington Redskins. And Kurt Knight who booted one of 43 yards is coming in. This will be a little shorter than that, Buff. About the 30, uh, about the 35 yard line, I'd say. Yep. White will hold, the ball will be booted from the 35. The kick has the distance all right and it's good. There's a timeout on the field with the score. Washington Redskins 13 and Green Bay 3. Now this word. Well, later today on the Parade of Sports, you'll be hearing the AFC playoff game between the Dolphins, the team with the perfect record in pro football, and the surprising Cleveland Browns. 
Dolphins coach Don Shula says it's time for the second season now. Miami's first ever 14-0 regular campaign is in the history books as far as he's concerned. And now the team must go 3-0 to capture the season's number two and the Super Bowl. The last season, the pro football world was talking about Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Of course, they meant Miami running backs Larry Zonka and Jimmy Kick. But this season, Coach Shula says the Dolphins' success can largely be credited to the M&M boys, running back Mercury Morris and quarterback Earl Morrill, who guided the Dolphins to 10 victories after Bob Greasy broke his ankle. For the Dolphins' foe today, the Cleveland Browns, it's been a wacky season. After looking absolutely awful in preseason play, 0-6, the Browns have come on like gangbusters in the late going and posted a 10-4 and four mark and are a very dangerous club. Pat Patrick with Bob Reynolds, Buck Jersey, and our mutual staff here at Kennedy Stadium in Washington, D.C. And now the young man who just booted a 35-yard field goal. Kurt Knight will kick off. Thomas and Hudson are deep for Green Bay. A 10-point lead now for Washington, and here's the kick, and it's a good one down in the end zone. It's going to be brought out of there by Thomas. He's back to the 10, gets to the 15-yard line, and he is hit at the 15-yard line by Ted Factor. So it'll be first down and 10 to go now for Green Bay from their own 15. He was not going to run it out, then he changed his mind. He had to do it over again. Had his brothers, he'd leave it where it was. You know, it's odd uh, that we expected Chester Markle and Kurt Knight as uh, perhaps that Chester Markle might make a difference. He's the leading scorer, fine uh, place kicker, but it's been Kurt Knight's goal who's been, it's been the difference here in this one, too. First and 10, Brockington and Lane, the running back. Scott Hunter now with the first down from the 15. Rolls out to the right, looks, throws, and it's caught by the tight end at the 32-yard line, Lynn Garrett. He threw it right over the middle, and Garrett made the reception, and that, ironically, Bob, is only his fifth catch of the year. They go to him very often, do they? Knight's two field goals now have given him 16 on the regular season, and including this one, this postseason game. 41 extra points. Chester Mark called 34. He's given an idea how many more he's kicked uh, field goal-wise than Kurt Knight, 34 to 16. But it has been Kurt Knight's toe, not only on the kickoffs, but on his field goals here today. If the Packers are going to do it, they're going to have to start to move. 11 minutes to play, two wide receivers, eye formation, Hunter back to throw. Days in the pocket and fires. It's caught by Carol Dale at the 45-yard line. And Mike Bass made the tackle right on the 45. It's another first down for Green Bay. And that's a gain of 13. And uh, Staggers goes out. Glass comes in with a play from Bart Starr on the bench. Number 53, checking in here for the Washington Redskins is Harold McClinton, the middle backer. Adios is coming out. Two passes for 30 yards now for Scott Hunter. Ten minutes, 20 seconds to go in the ball game. Ten points behind the Packers. Glass is split to the left, Dale to the right. High formation. Five men up front in that defensive line, and back goes Hunter. He throws. It is caught. Great reception by Glass at the 46-yard line. And Hamburger makes the tackle on the 46, and he is very close to a first down again. And I want to tell you, you can't cover him much tighter than they had him covered. Roosevelt Taylor can't believe it yet, Van. He was right there. It's a great catch. And that's three in a row for the young man, Scott Hunter from Green Bay. Yard shy with second down. Nine minutes and a half to play in the ball game. Green Bay trails by 10. Carol Dale out of the huddle. He's the only wide receiver. Second and one. Brockington and Lane, the running backs. Here's the give now to Brockington. He's going wide. He's being chased across the field. It's going to be hemmed in and brought down. Way back on the 49-yard line by Pat Fisher. And let me tell you something about this little guy. He's been around this league for a long time. He's only five foot nine, weighs 170 pounds. He's 32 years old, and he threw Brockington down like a paper doll. Brockington is a 6'2", by 230. He plays this game with enthusiasm. All the way back to the 49-yard line, so it'll be third down and six yards to go. Big play here, of course. 
for the Packers, trailing as they are by 10 points. Third down, six yards or so to go. They need this one badly. That defensive Washington tough, tough, tough. 10 carries, 13 yards, or 10 yards, isn't it? 13 carries. Here's Hunter back to throw. Throws it out of the reach of Washington. Threw it right out of the reach, and that was third down, and that was a big third down right there for Green Bay. And listen to this foul. And listen to this Washington crowd as they give the hand to their defensive unit. Deservedly so. So with eight minutes and 22 seconds of playing time remaining in this ballgame, Washington leading it 13 to 3. The Packers will have to punt. Back in kick formation is Ron Whitby. Alvin Heyman is back on the 10-yard line. Here's the eighth punt coming up for Whitby today. And it's a good one. Bacter waits for it on the 16 on the fair catch. So it'll be first down and 10 to go. That was a 35-yard kick. And the Green Bay Packers now find themselves on the defense again. And they have 8 minutes and 16 seconds. And the one thing that Bill Kilmer wants to do now, Bob, is to hold on to that football. With the score, Washington 13, Green Bay 3. There's a timeout on the field now. This One of the uh, real problems uh, at Green Bay this year is coming back to haunt them in this game. It is that uh, young Scott Hunter has been inconsistent at the signal calling spot for the Packers. True, they ran up a fine record of 10 and 4 on the year with uh, Hunter at the controls most of the way. But uh, unless the youngster can uh, snap out of it and come up with some key passes, uh, especially on crucial third down plays when they've got to keep the ball, it's just possible the next series of downs, uh, you could see Jerry Taggy, the great All-American from Nebraska, his uh, understudy, come into the ball game. Taggy, of course, is a double threat. He not only has a strong passing, passing arm, he uh, is an excellent runner, very strong, uh, built along the lines of a Bobby Douglas. And it's just possible that uh, if the Green Bay offense can't get rolling and uh, convert some of these third down plays where they desperately need some points now, it could be that young Jerry Taggy may be coming into a crucial spot for the team. Ready to go now. First down and 10 to go from the 16-yard line of Washington. The Redskins have the football with 8.16 to go. Two wide receivers. Bill Kilmer with Haraway and Brown. He rolls to the left, looks, throws, and caught by Jefferson at the 30. He's at the 35. Jefferson is all the way up to the 39-yard line. Kilmer's not going to sit on that lead. He's a riverboat gal gambler out there. 22 yards on the play. He's the Gaylord Ravenel, isn't he? <laughs> Loaded up to the 40-yard line. He and Jefferson has caught five today for 83 yards. The flow went one way, and Kilmer went the other and hit him beautifully. Taylor to the right side. Jefferson on the left. First down on the 40 of Washington. Now Bill Kilmer on the give now to Haraway. Haraway is at the 42, the 43. Tackled on the 43-yard line by Hall and Fred Carr. Gain of three on the play. It'll be second down and seven. And that's exactly what the Redskins want to do. They want to run as much of that clock as they can. They want to keep that football. They lead by 10 points, 13 to 3. Kilmer is 7 out of 14 for an even 100 yards, including a 30-yard strike to Jefferson. They've got the touchdown. 33-yard strike. Here's the pitch back now to Brown, and Brown is at the 45. He's at the 50. He's down to the 48. He is pulled down, but it's a first down for Washington. The Skins have the momentum now. There's no question about that. Six minutes and 47 seconds left to play. There's another first down for Washington. And Coach George Allen, if memory serves me correctly, has not won a postseason game in the past. Is on the verge here with his strong defensive unit and the running and the passing of the veteran Kilmer. in 20 carries has gained 76 yards. Wide the right side is Taylor. Jefferson to the left. It's an eye formation. Clock moving. 6.17 to go. Brown and Haraway in the eye. Gilmer taking as much time as he can on the call. Brown has it. Left guard. Stopped at the 47-yard line by Jim Carter. 
So he got one yard on that play. It'll be second down and nine to go now, but the clock continues to move. And that's a big factor right now for the Redskins who are leading at 13 to three. Now Smith is coming back in there for the Washington Redskins. Remember, immediately following this game, we'll be going to the Orange Bowl in Miami. Al Wester and Bob Halloran are all set to go for the Cleveland Browns and the Miami Dolphins. And now wide the right side is Taylor. Split to the left is Jefferson. Brown and Haraway, the running backs in the eye, and here's the give to Brown. Off right tackle, he's down to the 40. Stays on his feet, fights his way down to the 36-yard line, and Dave Robinson brings him down at the first down for Washington. And that Packer defense feeling the pressure a little bit now, getting a little bit tired as this Washington Redskin club pounds it out off the tackles. 11 yards on that one, and another first down, moving it to the 36. Washington leading it 13 to 3. Five minutes to play and the clock running. From the 36 yard line of Green Bay, it's first down and 10. Of course, they're down in Kurt Knight's range now if they have to settle for three. Mound and Haraway, the running backs, high formation. Kilmer now on a give to Brown, and Brown is hemmed in. He's going to be stopped at the 36. No gain. Making the tackle was Clarence Williams, the left end of Green Bay. His number is 83. He's from Ferrari View. 6'5", 255-pound third-year man. You just can't say enough about the coaching jobs turned in by George Allen and Dan Devine this year. Yeah, two super jobs, Van. His 11-3 and three finish, Allen's we're talking about now, has assured him certainly of his seventh consecutive winning year as a head coach. Five with the Rams and two with the Redskins. Wide to the right side now is Jefferson. Taylor on the left, and a pitch back to Larry Brown, following Haraway, he's down to the 30, and he's finally down to the 26-yard line before Jim Carter makes the tackle. But Larry Brown, who's getting up to his feet now, what a second half he's having. Listen to the crowd now. That's the hand for Larry Brown as he's replaced in the backfield. After turning in a superb performance here with 3.30 left to play, coming over to the sidelines, Jerry Smith, along with Roy Jefferson. Now Jefferson goes back into the huddle. 3.21 to play. The ball down there at the 27-yard line. And into the lineup now goes to Herb Mulkey, a running back. Young rookie from who had no college experience. Mulkey and Haraway, the running backs, third and one. On the 27, it's pitched back to Mulkey following his blockers, and he's got the yard. On the 26-yard line, incidentally, uh, Brown needs only one yard now to hit the 100-yard mark today. Get a holding penalty against the Washington Redskins. That'll slow that up for a minute or two. Mulkey got it down close to the 25-yard line before he was hauled down, but the skins are called for holding, and that'll cost them 15. Three minutes left here. And then it's on to the Orange Bowl in Miami as Mutual brings you the game there between the Cleveland Browns and the unbeaten Miami Dolphins of Don Shulett. We hope you'll stay tuned for that one. There's the signal from the official. And while we have the opportunity, the entire Mutual crew wishes all of you a happy Christmas season. Robert, I'd like to express my deep appreciation to Joe Blair of the Washington Redskins and their staff, Chuck Lane, the publicity director, Tom Miller, the general manager, all of the... Green Bay Packer officials, as a matter of fact, all of the National League people have been so great to us all year. Here's the pitch back to Larry Brown now. He's at the 40, cuts up and goes to the 38-yard line. He went over the 100-yard mark right there. Another 100-yard day for Larry Brown. Big factor is the clock, and it's running. 2.45, and it's 13-3 to in favor of Washington over Green Bay. Brown is coming out. It is fourth down, and Kurt Knight is in there. So he'll try one. This one will be from the 46-yard line. And that will match his longest kick of the year. Check me on that, right? 46 yards has been his longest kick of the year. Weiss will hold. Ball is spotted. The kick is in the air. He's got the direction, all right. Good. Got 
three field goals today, and he made only 14 all year. Go with a score. The Washington Redskins 16, Green Bay 3. There's a timeout on the field now. Though. Well, the presidential advisor, Henry Kissinger, is among the record crowd of 53,140 who watched this Christmas Eve battle between Washington and Green Bay for the NFC Divisional Playoffs. The presidential advisor sat in the private box of Redskins owner Edward Bennett Williams, along with other politicians and celebrities, including the senator from Maine, Edmund Muskie, and Hall of Fame baseball star, the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio. Incidentally, this is the largest crowd ever to watch a football game in the city of Washington, and it's the first NFL playoff game in the capital in 30 years. The last time a playoff game was held in Washington, D.C. was when Sammy Baugh, was running the Washington Redskins at quarterback. So that gives you an idea of the long drought coming to an end. The game was blacked out on TV in Washington as Commissioner Pete Rozelle refused a request from the president earlier this week to lift the blackout. And, of course, we all know that last-minute appeal by Washington attorney Robin Ficker to the Supreme Court was rejected yesterday and again rejected today. Larry Brown got a great hand while we're away as he, uh, the crowd was informed of, that he had gone over 100 yards again. That's the seventh time this season. That's almost believable. To give him 19 for his career. He went over 100 against the Vikings, against St. Louis in both games. But we're ready to go as Kirk Knight boots it off. Buchanan is back there. And this one's going to be right down almost out of the field of play. And Buchanan will down at the end zone. So he'll be brought back out to 20 in play. First down and 10 to go. And they talk about Chester Marco. We mentioned it before. So many people thought he might be a big factor here in this ball game. But oddly enough, it's been Kurt Knight, lesser known for his ability to kick than Chester Marco, who's been the big difference here. One of 43, one of 35, and this one of 46, which matched his longest. And then the only touchdown, the 33-yard pass from Kilmer to Roy Jefferson in what's been the defensive battle that we've expected. I hope they heard me over the crowd, Bob. He's only kicked 14 field goals all year going into this. From the 20, first down and 10 to go for Green Bay, and Hunter's going back to throw, rolls out to the right. He's going to run with the football, brings it up to the 29-yard line, and goes out of bounds and stops the clock. A gain of nine yards by Scott Hunter, but the Redskins will give him those all day. We have the two-minute warning coming up now, so there's a timeout on the field with a score. Washington 16, Green Bay 3. Well, it looks as though the Washington Redskins, uh, unless there's a sharp reversal of form in the last minute and 59 seconds of the ball game, it looks as though Washington will be meeting the Dallas Cowboys at Robert F. Kennedy Stadium for the NFC title next Sunday, New Year's Eve. The Redskins, who finished on top in their division, 11-3-0, and Dallas, the wild card runner-up at 10-4-0 in the NFC, uh, the Redskins get the home game advantage since they were a division champion. Had Green Bay won today, they would have hosted the Dallas Cowboys next Sunday, but it doesn't look that way. So uh, it looks as though two divisions have been decided in the National Football Conference, one in the AFC and another still to come uh, in just a little while at the Orange Bowl in Miami, Florida, where the Cleveland Browns will be taking on the unbeaten Miami Dolphins in just about 30 minutes or so. Now for the close of this ball game, let's get back to Van. Second down and just about a yard to go when play is resumed. I want to tell you this ballpark is jumping. You know, Van, this is the first time that this fine stadium here has ever hosted a championship game. And it's the first time that a championship game has been played, actually, in Washington since 1942, when the Skins derailed the previously unbeaten Chicago Bears. Many of you may remember that one in one of the greatest upsets in National Football League championship history. And it's the first time that the Green Bay Packers have been in a championship game since 1936. First time they've played the Packers, rather, in a championship game since that time. At that time, Washington was the Boston Redskins. Ready to go now. Second down, the yard to go from the 29-yard line. Back goes Scott Hunter. He throws. It's caught. 
by MacArthur Lane at the 45. He goes to the 50-yard line. It's a first down for Green Bay on the midfield strike. 21 yards gained on that play, but a minute and 49 seconds to play, and that's all. One minute, 49 seconds. So get ready at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Chick ready down there? Yeah, Chick is ready. Okay. <laughs> Ball on the 50-yard line will be first down and 10 to go now for the Green Bay Packers. Hunter is 12 out of 22 today for 149 yards. Well, then we're running down to the end of it here. A minute and 49 to go. And, of course, the winner of this one takes that giant step closer to the Super Bowl. And the loser will spend the longest and the lonesomest and perhaps the saddest Christmas Eve that they've known for some time. But that's another fact of life, of course, in the championship playoffs. The only thing that counts is victory. There are no ifs, no good breaks, no bad breaks, no second guessing. Nothing except victory. And as... George Allen said going into this one, the future, aha, today is the future. And for him, the future looks bright. For Danny Devine, who did a superb job with the Green Bay Packers, it's a little bleak right now. But this has been some kind of a football game. Top defenses on both parts. It's been the difference. Well, it's been the difference of Kurt Knight's foot. That's been the difference. Three field goals. First and ten from the midfield stripe. Waiting for it is Hunter with two wide receivers. Hunter going back to throw again. He throws over the middle, and it's almost intercepted by Ted Factor. Almost intercepted. Intended over there for Leland Glass, and almost picked off. So we'll go back to the 50-yard line. Second and ten, minute 46 to play. Garrett is coming in, and Lamont goes out. That's a change of tight end for the Green Bay Packers. They keep covering that ball down there. Is there a little rain in the air? It must be a very fine mist or something, because they keep covering the ball. So evidently, we have a fine mist. Waiting for it now is the quarterback, Scott Hunter. Second and 10 from the 50. Lane and Williams are running back. Back he goes. He unloads, intercepted by Hamburger on the 42. Hamburger gets to the 45, and he's finally brought down on the 44-yard line at the fifth interception of the year. Now listen to this crowd, because that just about does it. A minute and 35 to go in the ball game, and the Washington Redskins have the football, and they'll put it in play at the Packers 44-yard line, and the clock continues to move with a minute and 32. And a fine miss starts to fall here at the Kennedy Stadium in Washington, but it will not dampen the enthusiasm of this crowd who are just moments away from a championship here or from a playoff victory and a move against the Dallas Cowboys. And they start to sing. As for Van and I and our mutual crew, well, all we can say is we'll be home for Christmas. <laughs> Better be. Here's a give now to the running back, Haraway, up the middle. He got it to the 42-yard line, and Jim Carter is the man who made the tackle. The man in about 50 seconds, you're going to hear this stadium explode as they count off the time, 46 seconds. The Washington Redskins fans ready to make the move. Only a few left the stadium after the last field goal of 46 yards by Kurt Knight. Most of them are still here, and there will be a happy Christmas Eve in Washington, the nation's capital. Mulkey and Haraway, the running backs. Kilmer gives it off to Haraway. He's down to the 40, the 39, stopped by Fred Carr. 20 seconds to go. I don't think they'll get another play. They're just going to run it down now, and as Bob mentioned, this stadium's going to erupt. Ten seconds of playing time remaining, and already the fans are out on the field. I think they'll just let the clock run down. Four, three, two, one. It's all over, and the Washington Redskins have defeated the Green Bay Packers 16 to three, and there's Bedlam on the field now at Kennedy Stadium. In just a moment, we'll present the wrap-up of today's game. Now this. So next Sunday, December the 31st, 
the NFC Championship game will be played in Washington, D.C. at Robert F. Kennedy Stadium. And boy, will there be a rush for anything that's left over from the regular season crowd if uh, nobody wants to go to the ball game. And I imagine the Washington attorney, Robin Ficker, will be at it again <laughs> trying to get the blackout lifted. But Pete Rozelle, who has been adamant all week, uh, will put his foot down again and there will be no television in the Washington area, at least as far as we know right now. But that's of little consequence, really, because Washington has waited so long for a championship game that uh, I think a lot of people will just be satisfied with the radio, those that can't get into the ball game, And, of course, there's always the option of going outside the Washington area to uh, get a motel or a hotel room somewhere and watch the game on TV out of town. But this town will be jumping for the next week in anticipation with the rubber game against Dallas because during the regular season, the Redskins defeated Dallas in a come-from-behind effort the first time, 24-20, and then lost uh, down at Dallas a couple of weeks ago. Even though the Redskins put on a great rush in the second half, they fell short in that one. Back at Kennedy Station, it's Kennedy Stadium here in Washington. I'm a little excited, too, as this huge crowd of 53,000 poured out onto the field to envelop their victorious Washington Redskins football team who came up with a victory here today. Did a big one over the Green Bay Packers. 16 to 3. And a disappointed Packer crew, along with Danny Devine and his staff, moving to the dressing room now to contemplate the fact that they did a great job but couldn't quite pull it off here against this Washington Redskin who threw up a defense that was just superb. And actually, the Green Bay Packers have nothing to be ashamed of, of course. They're a young team. They're on their way. And they will be heard from in the future in the Central Division of the National Football League, that's for sure. Well, our thanks to Van Patrick and Bob Reynolds for their description of this very emotional ball game at Washington's Robert F. Kennedy Stadium.